every time. I always leave that up there. I don't know why I have that happen. Uh, <coughs> let me start over. Hello! Hello, everyone! Welcome to the Stream Stream. My name is Stream Tom, and I will be your host today. Uh, I'm also your host every other day. Uh, you don't really get a choice in that. But let's just uh, go around that topic. Today, we're going to be playing some Dungeons & Dragons Online, similar to what we do every single other week. Uh, but this time it's going to be special, it's going to be a little magical. What you see before you is lightning, thunder, character standing in a precarious place, a little puppy dog. You know, it's exciting, it's an exciting scene. But the reason it's exciting is because you see that energy? It almost looks like it's going into my character standing there. And the reason I say it looks like it's going into my character is my character is full of energy. This character is insanely powerful, and dare I say it, I think this one of the best ways you can play Bard. Some people will tell me, ah, Strim Tom, you gotta play them swashbuckler bards? They're so good. They do the swishy swashy and they got the shield and the dumb dodge and tumble all around. They're basically mostly fighters. And I understand that. But today, we're gonna go through uh, sort of like the build that I'm going with right here. This build. This Spellsinger build. The one where I have almost all of my points spent in Spellsinger. Ooh, baby, is it grand. I do have some points in Swashbuckler because how can you give up on that like 13% dodge or 10% dodge, you know what I'm saying? But, outside of that, most of my points are spent here in Spellsinger. I get a couple key things. I'm going to go through it really quick so you understand what's so great about it and why I'm choosing to do it. The first thing is the spell-like abilities. Shout is an unbelievable spell. Uh, it's better than Fireball. Uh, it's better than Lightning Bolt. It's better than a lot of different spells that are really good, as you get a spell like abilities from other classes. But the best part about Shout is it has a max cash level of 15, which, if you have the epic feat, uh, Master of Music, you can get it bumped up to 25. So a spell like ability from the Spellstringer Tree that you get at level 3 that can act as a level 25 ability. And when you amp up your spell damage, ooh, you're doing some crazy hits. Uh, I was just doing a quest earlier, I did a thousand damage with the spell at level 12. But considering it costs almost no mana, and I can regenerate my mana with this ability here, Spell Song Vigor, oh, it's pretty nice. Um, with all of my buffs active, one from Spell Song Trance and all the uh, things I have the core here, at level 12, I have a 35 D Shout DC unbuffed. With buff, it goes up to 37. And 37 <laughs> DC is not nothing for a level 12 character. So this character is really fun. It works really well. I kind of wish I had more mana. The only way I could get more mana is if I multiclassed with something else that uses charisma, either a sorcerer or a favorite soul, um, just to pump up some of my mana a bit more. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to plan on going full spell singer to grab Maestro of Life and Death, largely because it gives you heal and Whale of the Banshee. I don't know how good Whale of the Banshee will be, considering I have no necromancy DCs. But why not just turn it on? See how fun. See how it goes. Uh, the only thing I will say I'm disappointed, I tried out this Horn of Thunder ability, and it, I wasn't impressed by it. It might be great when you use it against oozes and things, but the damage is just very low considering the fact that it's on a large cooldown and it has the same shape as Shout. Um, it does less damage than my regular Shout, and you need two different spell powers to activate it. I'm not sure Horn of Thunder is that good. I feel like if you are already playing as an electric sorcerer, or sorry, no, as an electric bard because you're doing Draconic Incarnation Electric, you could combine that with Horn of Thunder, mix the two up, but I don't know how well it would work uh, on its own. So, eh, I just didn't like that much. And then I don't have the Mass Hold, because at this level I can almost obliterate everything instantly. Mass Hold would be great later, though, considering how much enchantment DCs I get. To put that in perspective, my Spirit Dancing is 32 right now. And it's going to get even higher as I level up. So, uh, this, this, this ability is crazy. And then it comes with another couple benefits, like Sustaining Song. This thing heals for an ungodly amount, and I love it, and it's going to keep healing for more and more as I keep leveling up. Reverberate doesn't do as much damage as I'd like it to, but I think it's just a scaling issue. I think it'll do more damage as I get higher level. And then my Bard Songs just last a really long time. So the character is really fun. It's really easy to play. The way it works is I just press Shout and my spell -like ability Shout and regular Shout back and forth, and I kill everybody. Sometimes I heal, although because of Sustaining Song, I usually don't have to, and that's it. That's how I do it. Uh, yeah. So, to start off the day, I'm going to do a couple things here. One thing I don't normally do, it's going to be a bit of a tutorial, but first, we're going to start off the stream with the same thing we do every single stream, and that is with our gold weekly VIP roll. For those of you that don't know, you're like, oh man, I get these silver rolls, but how do I get my gold roll? Well, you go here, you look, you're like, oh, silver, cool. I'm going to do my silver roll. Boom, look at this. What did I get? 75, or 750 experience points and a minor experience elixir? Well, I mean, that's pretty good. That's amazing for like a, for a silver roll, but I have a gold roll. How did I get a gold roll? Well, see, I, uh, you know, I I took my, my, my money card, whatever you call it, and I put it in my computer, and all of a sudden, bing, bang, boom, 
Uh, I got a gold roll. It's pretty cool. And with if you want to do that too, you can get a gold roll. That'll give you 3,000 experience and 5 gold seal elixirs of superior healing. Think about it this way. Why would I want an experience elixir that gives me 5% bonus experience when I can have health potions that mean I don't die in quests, which means I get through quests faster and I get more experience anyway. Okay, that one's, that one's a bit far-fetched. I, I can't stretch that one that far. But... Ooh, experience. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm going to start off with a little bit of a tutorial here, something I don't normally do right at the beginning. I kind of give you guys some time to like ease into it. But I'm just going to show off something that uh, I now have the ability to do. Uh, there's actually a specific reason why I'm here in the 12. Uh, uh, and I'm going to show you what it is. Turns out uh, I have these items here. This item here, it's called the Voice of the Master. Uh, it's great because it gives me 5% bonus to experience gained. And it's awesome. But the problem is I'm not currently wearing an item that uses the voice of the master. So there has to be some way around this, and there is. I talked to our, is it, sorry, no, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to go to the Stone of Change. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, if you take a mantle of the World Saber, which also gives you heroic inspiration, and some tokens, greater tokens of the 12, and the voice of the master, you can combine them into an augment, which you can then slot into a, an item, and then wear that item instead to get your bonus experience. Now, this might sound crazy, you know, like, uh, but strip time, you break down those items. Don't you want them? I mean, I do want them, but that's why I have an extra copy. I still have my Voice of the Master, which I pop on for the end of quests, um, in case I forget about this, but it's nice to be able to have that augment. So to do this, you go over to a Stone Exchange. It, uh, it has all these different recipes here. I don't know why it's actually here. Anyway, I plop in one of these, one of these, and one of these. Unfortunately, unlike other re areas with recipes, it doesn't autofill for you. I click Activate Stone, it understands that I have these three items, and then failure. Was I lied to? Was I lied to? I'm, I'm, I think I might have been lied to. Oh, no. I've done this before. Is it the Altar of Epic Rituals? Was I in the right place? It is the Altar of Epic Rituals. Dang. It was the Altar of Epic Rituals. Uh, okay, so I have to go to the other area. I was almost right. Anyway, you can do that, you get yourself an augment, you can slot the augment in any piece, you piece of gear you want. It's nice because I believe the augment is level 1, as opposed to being level 5, so you can have it right away, right from the get-go. It just depends on what item you put it in. Um, if there was a cosmetic item that had a slot, and I could put it in, a, in an item, like if I could put it in my champion crown, and just slot it in there, which is the one I pretty much always use as a headgear, because I'd rather wear this champion crown than this hat, because I don't like the look of the hat, I'd rather have the crown. Um, then that would be amazing. Unfortunately, that's not an option. I don't know what I would do with the augment because I don't really have... There we go. Put this in here. Put this in here. And this in here. There we go. I don't really have a, uh, a place to put an augment like this, but... Oh, well, there's nothing you can do about that. Bam! So now I have a Master's Gift. I went into my augment bag, so let me just crack open my augment bag. Whoosh, and now I have the Master's Gift. So I can put this in any item. Any item here. It's a level 1, and it gives 5% bonus experience points earned. Now, as I said, I don't have anything that I actually want to put that in right now. If I did, I probably would. Um, does this have an augment in it? Yeah, I'll probably put this in my Ghost Waking Cloak as I continue to level up. So I don't have to swap out my cloaks. So that's that's essentially it. If you didn't know you could do that, you can do that. The other benefit to actually having both of those items with the Voice of the Master and the... Um, and the cloak uh, is that if you have them both on, it gives you access to true seeing, so you can you know, penetrate any kind of effects that require true seeing to do, which is kind of cool. Anyway, so that's what's going on today. Um, and we're going to start doing some quests here. I shouldn't have gone this way. I'm supposed to go to the ship. Um, but yeah, so that's how I'm doing. I'm having a lot of fun playing this character. Um, it's really cool to just hit a button and then watching rooms get emptied. Uh, so... That's always good. But how are you guys doing? How's everybody else doing today? Are you guys playing any new characters? It's been a whole week. I haven't gotten to talk to you guys. Hey, what's up, Titan? How you doing today? Because, um, you know, like, I I play my game. You know what I'm saying? I play my game, and I get to experience all, like, the cool the cool things that I do. Um, but other people have way better ideas than I do. One thing I decided to do was go back over. Um, uh, that was the Altar of Epic Rituals, but, yeah, it, there are, the recipes are on there. Um... 
Uh, what I decided to do is I went over the uh, a lot of the videos that are on the YouTube channel, the Dungeons and Dragons Online YouTube channel. I went over the ones from my stream, and if you all the questions that some people had posted uh, on like some of the YouTube videos, I tried to go back and answer them when I best I like the best I could. So if you do actually end up watching these a bit later, you don't watch them exactly you know when it comes out. You don't watch the live stream, and you decide to leave a comment on a YouTube video that goes up on the Turbine channel. I do comment on it, and I will reply to you. Um, maybe not immediately, because I, I have to check frequently, but I do go back and check all the videos um, when I can. Unfortunately, I can't get like automatically notified, which would be really cool. I don't know, how to, unless like there's a way, but I don't think I can flag that. But oh well, Ataraxia Elite. If there was a way I could do that, that would be so cool, but there totally isn't, because YouTube is cruel. It's just, it's just very cruel, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no. Uh, I was looking at the Altar of Epic Rituals. Uh, both the Stone of Change and the Altar of Epic Rituals have the same uh, text on the background with the recipes, although the all, the, all the recipes actually only apply to the Stone of Change. The Altar of Epic, Epic Rituals has its own recipes, which you can see on if you look on the DDO wiki under Epic Crafting. It'll ex kind of explain what that's supposed to be used for. Um... Wait, oh, Dwarf Fighter. Man, Elmo, I like the way you're thinking. Are you are you in the same mind that I would when you go, oh man, now they can use Kensei to use my con to whatever. I'm going to go a full Stalwart Defender, Dwarven Fighter, be this tanky, tanky guy, okay? Tons of life, so much constitution, bumping up the constitution, get the constitution from everything, you know, like the, the Tower Defender stance and the capstone. But not only are you pulling in the constitution from the Tower Defender and the capstone, you're also pulling out, uh, you know, the extra constitution from the the action boost from Power Surge, giving you extra plus eight, you get con damage at a dwarf. Ooh, look at all that synergies, tons of damage, tons of HP. Whoa, you'd be the tankiest dwarf out there. Unless you're on a different wavelength, but that's the kind of dwarf fighter I would play. But yeah, man, level 12 so quick. This is why I like playing this character. So I see the shout button. This guy's like, I have 165 health. And I'm like, well, now you have significantly less because I just did 600 damage by pressing one button. But most people don't want to play bards like this. Um, most people are not entirely interested in playing bards like this. They're like, oh, man, I don't want to play no no spell sing a bard. I want to play some swashbuckler bard. I don't want to play a character that, like, that, like, swishes and swashes. But, man, I'm telling you. Spellsinger is amazing. The only downside I can see so far of Spellsinger is I have to do this. I have all these like songs that I have to sing at the start of every encounter, and it's like very tedious, and I don't like having to sing them all the time. And I kind of wish there was a way I could like get around that, like a multi-song. I have no idea if he is still streaming DDO. Um, due to my current work schedule, I haven't really. Um, no, there's a group up. It's it's right here. You can you can do it, um, but I do I have no idea if he's if he's still doing the stream. Purple Dragon Knight Sword and Board using 18 Warlock two Fighter using Charisma to hit and damage. I'm a little afraid the survivability won't be good. So the survivability will be very good, although if you're willing to spend the the shard, I actually think the pure Warlock would be a little bit better than going with uh, the fighter split. There's a couple reasons for my thinking. Uh, the first reason is that uh, if you go as a pure Warlock, um, you get access to the Enlightened Spirit Capstone, which is 10 melee and or 10 melee and 10 range power, which is 10% extra damage, which, which is a huge melee boost. Um, so I would recommend doing that. However, if you do take the two levels of fighter, it does give you access to two additional feats, so you can have bastard swords relatively easily, um, and then also you know pick up an extra defensive feat, especially if you want to go into the shield mastery and things. The issue is if you do want to play with a shield as opposed to single weapon fighting, uh, you'd need to kind of get yourself a sky vault shield, which can be expensive or in some you know it's very it's a very cost prohibitive shield to try to look at. Oh yeah, man. Fighters are really, really broken and really, really overpowered. Well, they're not broken and overpowered. They're just very reliable. They're just very reliable. Shade Archive Fighter. That's interesting. You get, get the extra dodge bonus from playing as a Shade Archive. That's pretty cool. I like that. But yeah, I think... I think... You know, your character, the the Warlock, would do a lot of damage, especially because you got the Charisma. Uh, having high Charisma means that it's going to affect your DCs on all your spells and your abilities. So your Eldritch Blast will actually have a very high DC. So you can specialize very, very heavily um, 
in your packed damage, which is which most warlocks like mine didn't. My conda damage, uh, I didn't specialize in the pack damage at all because I could never get anything to actually fail their save, um, which is interesting. Another thing that's interesting about this character, um, thanks. They're just typing in chat. Um, but what was I saying here? Um, another interesting thing about the Bard is one of the reasons why I don't like playing DC casters very often is because DC casters have this massive problem that every single character in the entire game... Welcome, just started Reclamation. Uh, every single DC caster in the entire game has this massive issue where if you play as a DC caster, the first thing you're going to notice is that all monsters have evasion. So if your saves aren't like the highest in the entire game, you're going to cast a spell, all the monsters are going to evade, you're going to do zero damage. But Bard is a little bit different because as a Bard, uh, my spells can't be evaded. They're fortitude saves. So it does mean stuff like dwarves are going to make their saves a little bit more frequently. Welcome, welcome. Live. Oh, except when they explode. Acid, range build, and wham, pretty fun. Well, I'm glad you liked it, Trilogy. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I also played it. Um, one of the first times I ever got... I mean, some monsters are still going to be making their saves, but not all of them. And if I ever do get into a little bit of trouble, I do have... Um, what is this? The auto sphere of dancing to kind of help me out. When it comes to actually healing myself, I don't have to worry about healing because my sustaining song is very powerful and it'll keep me alive. Oh, except when I explode. Acid, range build, and wham, pretty fun. Well, I'm glad you liked it, Trilogy. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I also played it. Um, one of the first times I ever got to do the stream stream here on uh, on Twitch.tv. Well, on, on this Twitch channel, anyway. That was the... Uh... Oh, how I got all those recipes on the UI? It might be because of the UI skin. I don't know. I thought that's the way it is. That's. I thought that's the way it, it looked. I I haven't looked at the stone to change in a long time. I thought they added that into the game. It might be because of the UI skin. This the UI skin I'm using is info blue. So, um, so I'm not sure on that one. And yeah, man, you cannot forget what day it is. It's the day of the stream stream. But yeah, my first stream stream that I got to do here on uh, the DDO stream channel, which was very cool and I was very happy to do. Um. That stream stream was a oh 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 Drowladen's dying to something and I don't know how to save him because I don't know where he is. Oh there he is right there. Oh he fell. Oh can I can I save his life? Okay. Uh working on today, I'm working on Bard. Sorry, I was focusing on the game, which I should not be doing. Should be focused on focusing on the chat. Um. Woo. Oh hey, there's a big rust monster here. Nice thing about playing Bard and the super high DCs is nothing makes their sound burst save. And when nothing makes their sound burst save, they get obliterated by my regular spells, which is kind of nice. Ooh, yeah. Get out of here. But it was, it's just cool to actually, uh, you know, revisit some of the older streams because I can see myself you know, playing the older builds, especially ones I hadn't written guides for, which was kind of cool. I'm running out of mana here, which is kind of interesting. I don't normally run out of mana, but it's because these dwarves, I have to use, like, two spells cast per dwarf, because they all have, like, a lot of health, and they make their stupid fortitude saves. No, he has 37 health left. Cool. So, yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. I poured myself a shot of Jameson that I didn't do. One second. Mm. We're almost at the top. Ugh. <laughs> ugh, ugh. I mean, I'm a man. I shouldn't make reactions like that. Mmm. Mmm. Gotta love me some whiskey at 7 o'clock on a Monday. That's how you can tell it's a Monday. The whiskey, man. And I know I'm doing a lot of damage, because I just go like, boom, hit a guy, and he takes like hundreds of points, and oh my god. I just like that I scream at people all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like this guy here, he's like, he's like, oh, he's coming to chase me. I just have to be more effective, or cost effective. Cost effective? Efficient. That's the one I want. Efficient. I have to be more efficient with my spell casts. I can't just be throwing them out constantly, you know? Gonna get my AoE healing going. 
aim. Oh no, it's Overseer Dretch. What am I gonna do? Oh wait, I'm just gonna kill him in two hits? Three hits? Eh, he's dead. Not so bad. I've also been looking at the first year spellsinger videos and even pausing the time because you showed your character sheet. Pen and paper. I can't figure out your starting ability stats. No fully we're using a 36 point. Oh, okay. Uh, so let me... Exp if you want, I can totally go over it. Because I can kind of phone this in while I do this. Uh, so, my starting stats. Uh, if you look at these stats here, it's kind of... There's a lot of different stats going on right here. I got uh, the strength. I started with a base of 12. Be aware, I have tomes. That's one if you're trying to... like track down some of my scores. I am in fact using tomes um, because when they went on sale before or like a little bit before Christmas they were like wicked cheap and when they were wicked cheap I'm, I'm not just gonna not pick it up you know what I'm saying? Whoa. Cool. Cool let's head to the end team. Um, what was I saying? Oh I took this down sorry. Uh, but I do have plus four tomes and everything that's gonna go up. But yeah, so we got the strength of 12. I have a dex of 14. Uh, the reason I started with a dex of 14 is just because I wanted a little bit more reflex saves. Um, my con is a base 14 as well. I don't have too high of a con. Um, the biggest thing is my charisma. I started out with an 18. It's now a 21 because I put all my level ups into con uh, charisma. I started with a base 8 intelligence and my started base 12. Sorry, base 12 intelligence and base 8 wisdom. So that is 12, 14, 14, 12, 8, 18. Doesn't consuming alcohol affect your judgment? Uh, it probably does. Um, but I think it makes my judgment better. You see, there are a lot of things you won't do while you're sober. Like, jump off of tall things. Um, yeah, no. So continue to drink heavily, even though you might uh, consider throwing up. Stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to do those things regardless. Because I've had more alcohol. Oh yeah, I get... My, my my personality. If you think I have a big big personality now, you just wait till you've seen me like halfway through this bottle of Jameson. Oh no, I'm stuck in a corner. I can't move. I also like the way the Earth Elementals dance. They're funny and goofy. Hehe. <laughs> Stupid Earth Elemental. But, so yeah, if the, if you're wondering about my base stats, that's what I'm doing here. Get out of here, enemies. Yeah, man, talking to strangers, that is also something I, like, don't do. I'm like, if you guys see me on the stream here, you're like, man, Shrimp Dog is so talkative, he's just, like, interacting with the chat, and he's like, we're all just, like, strangers, he doesn't know what's going on, and, like, people post comments and videos and stuff. Yeah, because that's on the internet. On the internet, I could be the biggest tough guy ever, uh, but if you meet me in real life, and I'm, like, a stranger to a stranger, I'm pretty, like, super introverted. I'll just be all quiet and be like, oh, hey, like, what's up? And it takes me a little while to actually, like, kind of warm up. I'm trying to work on that, because, you know, first impressions matter, things like that, but, uh... Cool. Um, but as I as I said, in I do find it very frequent. Like in uh, real life, I I have I, I sometimes when you, if you meet me and you're like, man, this guy seems quieter in real life. So, um, um, Skyros Jewel. If I must have missed some item or something. I already assumed you had plus one from tomes to everything with your character sheet at level three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did have plus one to everything. Um, but yeah, I've got uh, I have, I have plus four on all my stats. I don't have the plus sixes unfortunately. I would love to have plus six. I just don't have it yet. Um, and there's a couple stats I want to get higher. Things like uh, my armor class stuff that'll get a, bit, a little bit higher when I get a couple more items. Um, Skyros and Jewel. Welcome, we're just heading out to Skyros's Jewel. Sikros Jewel? I don't I don't know how to pronounce this one. Sikros Jewel. Um I'm just waiting here to show one of the guys in my party who doesn't know the way of the way. So we'll get going here in just a second. Uh, the nice thing about because I'm playing a bard is it gives me the ability to also consistently buff and help out my teammates. Um, a lot of people don't realize that this is important because they're like, oh man, but you have to be like self-sufficient, you have to be able to do all these other things. The nice thing about being a bard is I can very quickly be like, oh hey, somebody needs a, needs a little bit of health and then just give them a little a quick cure, you know? Because I can just do that because I have that spell. Um, and it's also very easy for me to get um, positive energy crit 
So for those like really clutch heals and things like that. Drisnet. Ooh, welcome. Heading over to Cycross's Jewel next. Cycross's Jewel? Cycross Jewel? It's it's hard. And I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. Wild man. I just like screaming at people and then they die. There's just something really satisfying. People be like, ah! Oh, he didn't die. Well, I'll just throw a sonic energy blast at him. You know, give him the old Kamehameha, you know what I'm saying? What is your view on spreading your ability points out for say, maxing one or two stats? Okay, so, oh, this is so hard. I really, really don't like not maxing stats. Um, and there's a couple reasons for this. One, if you're playing a DC caster, it's almost impossible to not max out your stats. Because what basically what it means is, if I'm playing as a sorcerer, and I want to be an evocation specialist, if I don't max out my charisma 100% of the time, whenever I can, with the best items and the best stats putting up at every level up and starting, then what I'm going to find is that every single monster in the entire game is going to make their saves and I'll do zero damage all the time. And that's just frustrating to me. I find with melees, it's not that big of a deal because having like a plus, a, like minus one on damage or something like that is kind of whatever. You know, it's not really gonna, in, like, at the end of the day, having one less point of damage over another stat is not really that big of a deal. Um, but I do find that whenever I play any type of melee, like, I, I absolutely, or sorry, not at melee, any type of DC based caster, um, I absolutely max out my stats. I'm a big, big min maxer on that point. Um, so, for example, if I'm gonna play a sorcerer, um, I'm going to start with a 18 Constitution and an 18 Charisma, because all the other stats don't matter, and I just want to go with that. However, when it comes to things like, um, you know, Ranger, places like that, I don't I don't need to min-max. I frequently do, just because I like to kind of, if, if I have a specific character build or a specific idea, I want to make sure I'm uh, capitalizing on whatever the best possible outcome is. So... To put in perspective, when I made my Arcane Archer Ranger build, um, I did it maxing out my dexterity. You don't have to max out your dexterity to do that build, but I did it because I wanted to really test the versatility, or not the versatility of it, but really see what the damage could be if you max it out. It's like Ross Jewel. Ah, I'm like talking instead of like actually pay killing trolls. Bam. So that's that's kind of it. I I don't always min max my stats. I do find it very easy to min max stats though. So I, I do frequently min max my stats. Whereas some other people, why can't I hit this troll? It's like he's not loading. Right, we just finished, which is why then immediately after I said, "Hey, we just finished when you joined." And then I updated it. I apologize for the confusion. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's hard. I I do like the idea of of kind of spreading your stats around, and some people do it very well. Um, I just I find myself leaning more towards like min maxing. I'll usually have one max stat on every character. Like it's difficult for me to play a fighter without maxing out my charisma or my strength, you know, because strength is like where it's at. It does your damage, that's your DCs, and then in my mind I think, okay, well if my DC is one point less. That's a 5% less chance that every time I need a stun to land, it's going to work. And that means that 100% of the time, I won't get my stun to land on a boss. And I'm going to get killed because I didn't land my stun or something like that. All right? That's that's kind of the thought process that goes through my mind. So I don't mind min-maxing, because if I min-max, it means that that, t that time where that little 5% would screw me over is not going to screw me over. But I don't think it's always important. Like I said, I think with melee, you have a lot of flexibility. Um... Although, when it comes to actual endgame builds, I'm probably not the best person to talk to when it comes to, like, what you should do to actually max out your stats at the endgame. I think it probably is better to have, a, a like, a, at least a decent spread. Um, uh, so, Dire Charge is an ability that you can take when you're level 29? Or is it 29, I think? I believe it's 29 is when you get Dire Charge, or 30, or 28. You can't take Dire Charge until like 20, 28, or 29, or 30. One of those two things. I know it's not at least until, or sorry, 20, 27. It, I think it's like, you get a Dire Charge at 27, or 29. Oh, but you are 29. You have the prerequisites and you can't take it? 
That's weird. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to take it. You should be able to. Hmm. Because I know Dire Charge is really good. Um, there was actually a post on the DDO subreddit today that I wanted to respond to, but I kind of didn't really have a chance to do it. Wait, was that the key? Oh, cool. We have both the keys. Damn. Ooh, welcome. That's weird. I've never actually had the chance to play around with Dire Charge, although I've heard it's really broken. Like, really, really strong. So I haven't. I just haven't had the chance to play around with it. Um, I couldn't tell you why you couldn't have taken it. Let me look into it. Dire Charge. Got to defeat the Ancient Smugglers. Yeah, yeah, I killed that guy when he didn't even show up. Where's Dire Charge? Dire Charge. Yeah, Dire Charge. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, did you have... Um, did you have three Martial Destinies maxed out? So you've got both... So you have... Uh, what? All of... Because I have every Destiny maxed out, but you have Grandmaster, Flowers, Legendary, Dreadnought, and Shadow Dancer all completely maxed. You're level 29. You should be able to take it if you have all those things. So, like, these things are all level 5 with all of the points maxed. Like, you have 100% of the experience where it's a max Destiny. If that's the case, then I can't imagine why. I'm not entirely sure. This is going to sound crazy, and maybe wrong, but did you, for serials, try logging out and logging in again? Because sometimes that happens as well. Um, if that doesn't work, I'd recommend submitting a ticket, but I'm not sure on how to fix that. I mean, I've had I've had good experiences with uh, Turbine customer service in the past, so they there might actually be just an answer out there you're not looking uh, or you don't see. Um, it might also be worthwhile to do a quick like Google search, like Google searching "I can't get dire charge help." Uh, unfortunately, you can't deconstruct shards in that way. You can't rip uh, effects from items and then apply them to other items. That would be a super cool system of crafting, and it's the way that crafting was done in uh, in uh, Ashron's Call 2, but it comes very cumbersome and difficult, and the RNG factor is kind of frustrated, so... Oh! Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'm not entirely... Ooh, I one-shot that guy. That feels satisfying. Um, no, I'm not uh, I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Sorry to hear that, man. I've, I've never encountered that, that kind of bug before where you just can't take the feet. That's weird, though. If you have all the destinies maxed out and you're level 29, you should just be able to take it. It doesn't have any other prerequisites than that. Um, I know I've like had the option to take Dire Charge before. Hold on, I'm going to get you guys. We still have to wait for everyone to get in anyway. If you're in like the big cavern, just go to the south side. It says Drizinet's here and here. Oh, that's Dry Lab. Come down to me. Yeah, now we can get the heals going. There we go. I killed this guy at range, but my range... Oh, the shout range, though. Oh, no. I oh, know, it's it's selective. Doesn't want to go. There we go. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to make sure everybody's inside. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Everybody's inside. Now we can finish the quest. Um... But yeah, if you deconstruct something, um, you do not actually get to rip items off of them, or like rip effects off of items. Instead, um, if you want to, cr you'll have to craft a shard on your own. Like you'll have to go and create the associated shard. So if you have like a strength 20 item, you can't take like the strength 20 off of the item and apply it onto another item, or get a strength shard off of it. You'd have to deconstruct it and then make a new shard. Um, which sounds silly, but the uh, main point of deconstructing items is it gives you a little bit of experience points, and it also gives you a large quantity of lesser essences, which can be very tiresome to come by. 
that Hammer of Lead and Clouds, do you only have the Elite version? Because the normal version? That's true, but I only have the Elite version. The reason I only have the Elite version is because this item, Hammer of Lead and Clouds, comes from uh, Giant Hold Tor, which has dragons, and Giant Hold Tor, uh, why would you not run that on Elite? Because you gotta kill them Elite dragons, yo. You gotta get more dragon scales. Guaranteed scale drop on Elite. Cool, good job, team. And then make sure you get the location by going up the end bit. How many players are on the player council? I don't know, but there is a list on the official forums, which I can get for you if if I can do this while climbing ladders. Uh, I believe this will have the list of all the players. Yes, it does. Cool. There you go. So, ah, uh, got a model running. So if you take, oh god, I can't see. If you take that link there, it'll ch bring you to the page with all of the different, uh, all of the different player councils. Whoa, cool. Then you just drop off and you kill this Dwager Scout. Is there another one? Oh, there's another one. Get out of here. Get out of here, Dwager. Cool. Yeah, if you want to get the location, you just drop down onto this area and it gives you the location. Bam. I gotta pick up my quest rewards, then I'm gonna take level 13. Uh, there's a lot of cool things that get at level 13. This is why I like save banking some items. Um, so I was in the middle of saying something and I just stopped talking. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing that. By the way, I do that a lot. If you're like, man. Shroomtom seems inconsistent with the way that he forms his words and his sentences inside his brain. And I mean, that's just an accurate statement, and just representative of me, uh, like, on, uh, as a whole, uh, is accurate and confusing, or inaccurate and confusing. But that's okay. Sometimes, you know, you gotta have people that are like that, right? Uh, anyway, uh, I like having items that are, that you can use at varying levels that you can kind of bank over time, especially when you do reincarnations. So a good example is these items right here. So when I take level 13, I get to add a couple items to my repertoire. So, uh, I have the armbands and the silence ones. These are amazing if you do not have them. Um, so, dexterity. So this item right here. Thank you, team, for coming. Um, Welcome. I'm just taking 13, and then we're going to start on the level 11 quest, starting with the desert, and the quest that we're starting with is the Purge of Fallen Shrine. Bam. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Now i got to find a part trainer. And now i got to keep getting back my train of thought. Oh, it's so hard to talk and do things at the same time. Let's level up while we do this. Okay, so I'm just going to put my points in, like, AFK. Uh, one of the reasons I really like that armbands and the silence ones, one, it gives six dexterity, which is just kind of nice. Two, it also gives eight to your reflex save. So combine that 6 dexterity, 8 reflex save, that's 11 reflex save from one item. Plus it gives me dodge 5% and has a blue socket. I don't know what to do with the blue socket, but that's pretty sick. Ooh, 5th level spells. Gerator Heroism is the only good one, and Cure Light Wounds Mass is the only other good one. Cool. And then I get Dim Door. Bam, look at that, that was easy. Sweet! Yeah, and I get 2 armor class. Cool. So, I'm going to put on this. So that's going to give me a lot of dexterity and dodge chance. Um, so suddenly, now I have a 27 reflex save, which is fantastic, and my armor class just went up by a bunch. Uh, next, I have Hal Halcyonia. Hal Halcyonia. It's one of the newer items. Gives wisdom, devotion, and healing lore, so it'll give me my healing potential. I don't have to have that in any other item. And magical efficiency, save 5% on spells. Pretty, pretty good. And because I don't need that uh, this devotion ring anymore, I can then swap in my perform bluff ring. Ooh. And that's how we do that. It's all about efficiently swapping items at different times. And now I don't actually need gloves anymore. I can get some new gloves. I don't need these delightful gloves of potency. Ugh. I could put my gift to the master in the art bands, but I will likely upgrade them. Eh, it's true. Oh, dang, I keep forgetting to swap on my voice of the master that I have. Huh. That's a good idea. 
Yeah, why don't I do that? I'm going to wear these for a long time, so let's just do that. So I double-click on my Gift of the Master. Then I go ahead and I put on my armbands here. Boom. Blue slot, Gift of the Master. Bam. I'm probably going to be wearing these mostly through Epics anyway, just because having all that extra... Yeah, Gift of the Master. Having all the extra... Um, the extra reflex saves is just too good not to use. And then 5% reduction of spell cost. That's way good. Ooh. 59 for the year of 2016. There you go. Um, I don't know if they're still taking open applications. I'm not entirely sure. Um, oh, application and nomination period has been closed. Yeah. I mean, I applied. I got in. Uh, and now I'm doing my part to service you guys, the DDO community, try to make, you know, it's a, a fun and exciting game. I mean, I can already I can already say that I've done my part uh, because some of the things that are currently in the game were directly influenced by me, so that's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. I left my mark. left my mark on all y'all. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and, yeah. But yeah, it's something that you should consider. If you play the game a lot, uh, to keep in mind, so the Players' Council is not just made up of players who are like uber 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 end game farming god tier people who are just like oh, I'm just gonna play the game constantly kind of people um, there are some people like that obviously on the players council because you need those players to kind of help to talk about game balance and things like that and, and end game kind of considerations however there are also other people in the player council who aren't the most hardcore players who are semi casual stuff like that because they are important as well you can't just forget about the people who don't play the game constantly because to put this in perspective, um, if you balance the game only around what the extremely hardcore want, then you're going to turn off a lot of your other players. So they need the opinions of players who, you know, just play the game for fun, play the game on weekends, you know, don't do the end game, don't reincarnate that often, people that don't re reincarnate at all, stuff like that. A lot of people that instead of leveling up, they just spend all their time dabbling in crafting. You've got to have a wide variety of people, so... Will you still get the plus 10 from the tier 3 effect of using the hammer? No, I will not get the plus the, the effect when using the hammer. So the hammer is a temporary solution. That's why at the current moment I don't have the uh, swashbuckling enhancement and I'm not going to be taking it. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to be doing instead is... Update 31... Alright, let's go purge some fallen shrines. I'm, gonna, I'm loading up a, uh, a list here. Do, 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 do. Hey, what's up, Edward T underscore? How are you doing? Uh, what I'm going to be doing instead is, after I get the Hammer of the Leaden Clouds, I'm going to be acquiring this item right here. Um, as soon as possible. One, because that item is crazy, but also because I really want it. Uh, where'd everybody go? Where's the rum gone? And that item is ridiculous. A quality perform resonance 108. 108 for a level 17 item is really good. Plus that 16% uh, crit chance is really nice. The quality charisma is just cherry on top of the cake. Um, so yeah, can't can't say there's anything wrong with any of that. Oh, enhancements. Toss out some buffs quickly. Oh god, I have so many buffs. If I could combine all my songs into one, I would definitely do that. But I can't do that, so I don't. I don't have that as like an option. I'm gonna clump guys. Just aggro them and clump them. What's the item that spawns? different oozes. Oh, the item that spawns oozes is a... it's from green steel crafting. It's legendary green steel. It's one of the... I believe it's one of the mineral tiers. I'm like fairly certain it's one of the mineral effects. Whoop. Dance, fools, dance! I beat your spell penetration. Ha 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 ha! I do like that. I do, I do beat spell penetration, which is really nice as a bard. Um... Now there's a couple reasons for that. Again, why I say like Bard is really broken. So a lot of different characters, if you want to pick up spell penetration, ooh, you're gonna have to pick up that spell penetration thing that costs two enhancement points per spell penetration you like to beat, uh, which is ridiculous. That's so much points for spell penetration, but it's okay. I'm playing a spell singer. Spell singers get two from Prodigy, 
three from just the spell penetration here. Um, and I believe I get more from here? No, that's but that's still five from the tree. Five from the tree is pretty nice. Oh, there is a ooze green steel in heroic? Oh, well, there you go. This is the ooze green steel in heroic. So it's the ooze green steel in epic and heroic. It's ooze green steel. Doing the epic oozes and all this. Oh, man, the army build. Oh, I would love to see the oozes with as like the army build. For those that don't know what the army build is, that's getting everything to max out like your your hirelings and stuff. Getting So you get all the pack abilities. Uh, you might consider multi-classing in some warlock as well to get the ridiculous stuff out of enlightened spirit. Oh, man, the army build. That would be pretty sick. Could you imagine having like an ooze army? Then you also have your dog, you have all your summoned creatures, that kind of thing. Maybe a hireling. Who needs friends when you can have an entire army, an onslaught of, of just creatures, a never ending onslaught. That would be so cool. Whoop. Dance. I love that everything fails their saves because my DCs are so ridiculous. And I just hit that guy for 11-17. <laughs> that makes me feel good. Hashtag humblebrag. The Meridia Quests and Legendary Elite? Well, the Meridia Quests are unbelievably hard. Uh, even on, like, Heroic, the Meridia Quests are crazy hard. Um, although, I've never actually done... Um, I'm gonna be honest. I know it's been, like, a week. I haven't had a chance to play the new quests. I'm gonna play them. I promise. I will play all the new quests. I just haven't had a chance yet. Don't worry, guys. I, I wouldn't lie to you. I wanna, I wanna bring you guys the best content, you know? But I just haven't had a chance. Uh, so, don't hate. I just, I imagine it's probably a lot of fun. I, I just, I haven't had the chance to go play it. Oh my god, this is why you don't ever target spells like Soundburst. Oh my god. Get out of here, get out of here, Mephit. Get out of here. Ooh, venomous Shortbow. And we've got to kill Ashuk, which just always makes me think of the, the Dilbert character, Ashuk. What about blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Ashuk. Okay. Now we're going to have... Now I have Dimdor, so we're going to put that here. Cool. Next, we're going to do the walk-up tombs. So, Tomb of the Astrologer and the Physician. I know one of them's level 10, but whatever. So, but yeah, I actually haven't done the new quests, either on Legendary or Heroic. I've just only seen them. I've seen them on live streams and stuff, I just haven't had the opportunity to actually go and do them. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for disappointing all of you. Uh, I'm still gonna disappoint all of you, but I, I just feel bad about it. Man, I love this! 32% Sonic crit? God, that makes me feel so good. The most amazing thing is that the Dashing Gloves, the epic version, gives like 30% Sonic crit or something dumb. Um, so with the Sonic Crit you get from the Gloves, the Sonic Crit you could get from Energy Criticals, and the Sonic Crit you get from Bard, you can almost get 50% critical hit chance, like, like that, with your, with your Sonic abilities, which is hilarious. Uh, 50% crit chance with spells is, like, a lot. I know I say that, like, oh, that's not zero, but, like, it's seriously not zero. Crack me open an old-style Pilsner while I'm, like, totally auto-running to the next quest. Hmm... Okay, we're just going to do the quick buffs here. We're just going to do the quick buffs here. I can greater heroes than you. Oh, but you already got a GERD. Alright, let's go. The rest of the buffs are just for me, so you don't have to follow me. That's, that's the, like I said, if there was a way that they could combine bard songs into one, so you could have like, uh, like a chorus of chants or something like that, like as, a, as an enhancement, where it plays all your, like, you could add a subset of bard songs and then it plays all at the same time, that would be awesome. So I could have all my buff songs all going out at the same time. Just because I'm lazy. I'm just lazy and I don't want to have to, like, actually pay attention to it and do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just lazy.
race and class. Uh, what you're watching today is a human, because everybody plays humans, because humans are totally broken and overpowered. Uh, a human spell singer bard, pure spell singer. I have a little bit dabbled in swashbuckler, but not for the melee. And I do exclusively sonic damage. Uh, I do sonic damage for a couple reasons. One, basically nothing is immune to sonic damage. I think there actually are some monsters immune to sonic damage, but blah, whatever. Um, I don't care about the ring of spell soaring, dude. I want. I don't need to get extra mana when everything dies in one hit. I know none of those monsters died in that room, but I, I'm just going to say that anyway. Um, now, actually, I do need your guys' help, so I encountered kind of an issue today. So, I was playing this game, okay? I was playing this game, and I was having some fun, but I had a problem. So, the next class that I really want to do... What quest is this? Tomb of the Physician? No, that's not the quest. What's it called? Chamber of Ramat. Uh, the, the next character I want to play is going to be a cleric. A nega cleric. A cleric who focuses on negative energy. That I'm talking about... Oh yeah, I got a bunch of cosmetics, so that's why. Uh, if I take off all my cosmetics, I actually look... Uh. 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 Go cosmetics. I actually look like this. Bam! Look at me, I'm a bard. Ah, ah, look at me, I'm a bard. Ah, I'm a bard. Ah, ah, cosmetics. <laughs> But I like my cosmetics, because <laughs> I paid money for them, so I want them. I like using my cosmetics. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be playing a negative energy cleric. Divine Disciple, for those of you that are un unaware. Um, invalid inventory slot. I'm going to be playing a Divine Disciple, for those of you that are unaware. Uh, divine Disciple has two different options. You can play it as a light Divine Disciple, specializing in light spells and light magic. Or, you can actually play as a negative Divine Disciple. So basically like an evil cleric. A cleric who specializes in necromancy and summoning the undead. And controlling the undead and killing people. Ah, I don't care about the seal. I don't even know what it does. Why not use cosmetics? What's wrong with cosmetics, dude? Cosmetics are awesome. Oh, die everybody. Oh wait, I can, I can dim door out of this. What am I doing? I have dim door. I'm dumb. I just got it. I keep forgetting. Um, but I want to play a negative energy cleric because nobody plays negative energy cleric. I have never seen a negative energy cleric. I have seen, you know, your standard um, divine disciple cleric because they get all the amazing spell-like abilities. Um, I've seen stuff like that, but I've never actually seen a negative energy cleric, so I want to play one. But I had this massive problem. So I was doing Threnal today, and in Threnal, south, or sorry, east part two, Welcome. We're heading... Oh, we just finished Chamber of Vermont. We're heading over to Chamber of Kurush in the desert. Um, but I just okay. finished uh, Threnal. And in Threnal East, Part 2, right at the beginning, right when you leave Coil, there's a huge crowd, a huge crowd of Warforged Death Clerics. Now, they're green, which is, like, pretty dumb. I don't know why they're green, but they're green. And these green Warforged Death Clerics look amazing. And I'm like, man, you know what would be cool? Why would I play a negative energy cleric? Let's go. When I could play a Warforged Death Cleric. What if I actually made one? A Warforged Cleric who specialized in negative energy spells and killing people. Doesn't that sound cool? Ooh. So I have to, I have to ask you guys. Do we, what do you think I should do? Should I, like, do, like... Because I'm going to be doing it. It'll be on stream here, so I'll give you, like, ideas and things. Would you rather see a fully optimized Nega Cleric build? Or would you rather see a fully optimized Warforged Death Cleric? Which just sounds so metal. I mean, it is pretty metal. It's like, Death Cleric. What do you think? What do you guys think? Um... Don't worry, I, I don't... I, I make, like, shitty characters, but I, I never give up, so I'll make it through. The guy on using heroic green steel ooze weapon, there were just oozes everywhere, so there's no maximum amount of oozes you can summon. Hey, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the contributor contributor of the... Uh, contributor to the lag. That's it. We solved the lag problem. Exactly, Warforged are pretty metal. So that's what I'm saying. I need... I'm going to probably put up a boat at some point, um, like a straw poll, to see what the answer is, but I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, what, sh what should I do? A Warforged, or sorry, a regular Nega Cleric, or a Warforged Death Cleric. Ooh. 
See, you say it would be challenging, but the thing is, once you hit level six or uh, level eleven, you basically already have you know the more the more damaging spells anyway. Um, Drow or Gnome? Drow or Gnome would be interesting. Drow would give me Charisma that I don't really want, because Charisma is great for Radiant Servant, but if you're a Radiant Servant, you're not murdering people constantly, which is the point of a Nega Cleric. A Nega Cleric wants to steal souls and stuff. So I want to be able to steal souls uh, and Radiant Servants. Uh, Halfling Death Cleric just sounds like a pain, because you'd have the... the I just don't like Gnomes because of the reduced item capacity. You need to have a very high strength to be able to support those characters without losing a lot of your defenses. <laughs> and also your movement speed. And I'm a big fan of move speed. Like, I don't know if you guys, like, are aware of this. I love me some move speed. So, like, if you look at my character here, I run real fast and I even have bard move speed, which makes me run even faster for my bard levels. So, I'm a huge fan of move speed. I can actually keep up with this barbarian here thanks to my move speed. I would not like to not have move speed. But Drow could be interesting. I mean, if I wasn't going to play as a, uh, as a Warforged, I would probably go as, like, a human. Uh, just because I like extra feats. But, I mean, there's nothing wrong with playing as the Warforged Death Cleric. Hey, can somebody share this with me, or is it when you just walk up? It's a walk up, but I should be able to share it. Think about Dwarf Barbarians. I just started playing again after a couple of years, so I don't really remember where everything is. No worries, man. It's all good. Um, if we finish this one before you get in, I'll lead you to the next one so you'll be able to, like, you know... Not is get it lost over and stuff. at the end with the Wizard King, or is it... Yeah, it's the one to the left of the Wizard okay. King. Okay. Um, what do I think about a Dwarf Barbarian? Well, alright, we're at the end, so I'll just wait for you to get in. Um, what do I think about Dwarf Barbarians? Well, you guys saw me play a uh, a Dwarf uh, Warlock. A Dwarlock, as I like to call it. Uh, because you get con to damage. Now consider this, Barbarians get unbelievable con. Every single tree gives them con, and all their capstones give them four con. Now imagine if you had con to damage, and you're playing as a Ravager, so you have your con instant death effect when you use a Rage. That's a lot of con, okay? That is so much con. So, from playing a Dwarf, you get two con. From playing, and then the Enhancement Tree, you get two more con. From playing a Barbarian, no matter what, you're going to get four con with the Capstone, and you get two extra con out of whatever your tree you're doing, and probably another two con of another tree. So that's like... 12 con. It's probably even more con than that. Then you pick up con to damage at a dwarf. You pick up a two-hander, and you just start killing people. Dwarven barbarians? I'm in. I, I love the idea of dwarven barbarian. I got one right here. Look at this. Fate singer, apparently, but I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you about that. Cool, you're inside. I'm here. Cool. Did I go left or don't worry about it. We're done. All right. All right. Cause it's like a big maze in here. Nice goggles of illusion and sight illusion. That'd be great if illusion spells weren't terrible spells. Uh, we just finished Chamber of Kurush. We're heading over to Marad the Mines next. Marad the Mines. We must Marad them. Uh, where's Marad the Mines? Oh, I can't see it. There it is. And I got a... One of these. One of these. Alright, let's go. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of Dwarf Barbarians. Yeah, the Illusion and Sight Illusion. Could you imagine if that was like, um... You know, a, an Evocation item or a Conjuration item? Ooh, you could sell that for some decent cash. I'm talking like at least 100k. 100k plats. I don't know if you'd need 100k plats, but you could definitely do it for 100k plats. 100k. Oh, who's lagging behind? Make sure, make sure he keeps up the move speed. Mm. I find I crack a beer during stream, and then I just forget to drink it. I, I know it's like a crime against nature. I don't know why I do that or for what for what nefarious purpose, but I do it sometimes. I just forget to drink my beer. And then I finish the stream and I'm like, oh cool, now I have this warm beer that's been sitting here for three hours. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be nice. I'd love to get me some goggles like that, especially on this character with the evocation DCs. I mean, like I said, it is my DCs are already very high as it stands, which is really good. Um, the fact that I'm pulling like what 35 on my shout. 36 when I actually have my buff on. 
I mean, I will take that. I will take 36. Um, oh, man. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the, the buffs for everybody else. Favorite Soul and Blade Barrier? Oh yeah, man. Favorite Soul and Blade Barrier is really good as well. The thing about Blade Barrier and Favorite Soul, though, is that Blade Barrier doesn't move. Hey, what is, uh, what's up, Ogmort? How you doing? How? Oh shit! Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Front row. Uh, there's a way out of this lava, right? Where do I go? How do I get out of the lava? How do we get out of the lava? Oh, I dim door. That's how I get out. Ugh. That's how you get out of the lava. That's how you get out of the lava. You gotta use your brain. You see? That's that's why they pay me the big bucks around here. Ooh. There we go. You gotta you gotta think quick. Think quick on your feet. That's why I'm a playing a bard, you know? They know everything, they got these little these little tricks and stuff. They gotta they always gotta trick up their sleeve. So, ooh god. Whoop. Exactly, a Warforged Favorite Soul is like a mobile blade bear here. Hey, hey, get out of here, Elder Fire Elemental, you jerk. Just wait when my cooldowns are off. Whoosh! And he makes I don't crit. Dang. It's unfortunate when you, like, don't crit, because you just feel sad. You're like, man, I, I really want to crit right now. Uh, give me that impure black iron ore. There's more. There's more around here, I swear it. Yeah, <laughs> Warforged favorite souls like a mobile blade barrier. I can't, I can't argue with you there. Oh, that is already that guy's dead. Cool. Man, you guys don't know how much better it is to play bard than it used to be. So I liked bard when the game first came out, and bards were just like really nice because you'd have a buff bard. They would, they would bring all the buffs, and the melee would love having a bard around because they got the haste and stuff. Um, but what's really interesting is that. Um, Bards used to not be able to actually cast their abilities while they were uh, while they were moving, so you couldn't actually sing a song or do anything while moving. You had to do that only while standing standing still. Additionally, all of the bard songs had a full duration. So right now, you can do like spell song trance and you sing for like a second and then it's done. But woo, if you try to do like uh, inspire courage or like if you tried to do this before the old spell song trance, that would last so long. You'd have to stand there for a very long time just blah, 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 singing your song. It was terrible. Bards have it way easier now. You can just run around and do it. Can you DDoS me? Um, I don't know. Can you? You probably shouldn't. Because this is not the DDoS stream. This is the DDO stream. So if you're planning on DD DDoSing me, uh, don't do that. One, because it's like a crime, but also because I don't, I don't want you to do it. Uh... I mean, in essence, it's not like this is not like a you know, this is not like a venue of making money for me, so it doesn't like ruin the world. It just kind of ruins the experience for other people, and I don't know why you'd ruin the experience for other people, man. It just seems like not a nice thing to do. You gotta you gotta let the fun go on. That's all we want to do. Sit here and stream and listen to like Mario music that I don't want to listen to. Ah, there we go. Here's here's an. Oh no, I don't want to listen to the song. Oh god. Uh, DDoS is um, distributed denial of service attack. Uh, so that's... Oh, wow, we finished that fast. Cool. Good job, team. I'm going to go get that chest real quick. And then we're going to head to... Ugh, offering of Blood. It was actually really, really funny. Um, yeah, distributed denial of service attack is essentially where you send... Th from what I understand of a DDoS attack is when you send basically streams of bytes into a server and kind of clog it and stop something from happening. Um... So, I don't know how to do it. I just that's what I understand. Is I'm sure it's more much more complex than that for my feeble, uh, chimp brain to understand. But the most important thing about it is that uh, if you go on the DDO subreddit, or if you if you do pay attention to that, one of the funniest things on the DDO subreddit is this person was like post on and they're like, "Can somebody DDoS me?" Because it was DDO and they thought it was actually like a subreddit for people DDoSing. Oh, and it's not a subreddit for people DDoSing, which was amazing. Beautiful. Man, I'm not. Ex I did not expect this song. Cool. Offering of blood. Yabra. 
don't lag and crash the DDO stream. We're just having fun. We're just playing the video game, bruh. Um, but yeah. Mm. What do you mean such a thing exists? Like DDoSing people? Because it's the internet. Think about it this way. It's like, um, locks exist, and then locks have keys to open those locks. But then why does lock picking exist? Well, because if there's one way to get in, that means there has to be more than one way to get in. You can't just have one way to get in. So, DDoSing is the same thing. It's basically like saying, like, well, if one person can watch it, well, let's just pretend like there's 50 billion people watching the stream. And if we do that, the server will crash. And then, bam, denial of service. So why does it exist? It exists because you can do it. I wouldn't recommend doing it. One, it's not very nice. Um, but it, And it also can very heavily affect many people. I've never understood why people sometimes did it for, like, big events and, like, tournaments and stuff. They're like, ah... Well, actually, that's not true. I totally understand that. If you want to, like, want to win a video game tournament, and you're like, man, I could just, like, cheat to win. I mean, I guess. I guess I understand why you would do that. It just feels hollow and shallow. Well, sort of. I imagine that one reason somebody would want to get DDoS is for DDoS protection, right? So imagine you're working, like, systems or networking, anything like that, and, you know, you want to get hired as a system. I'm just jumping all the way to the bottom and running from there. It's easier. Oh, sorry, not Offering of Blood. Crap, we're doing the other one. The, um, the Raid the Volker Room. The one that's down here. Then Offering of Blood. My mistake. I made that mistake. Um. It doesn't really look like a bard. Yeah, but it looks so badass. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna wear the cosmetics. Um, actually, I can take off the armor, though. I can, I can take off the armor. Oh, my mouse just froze. But yeah, it's, imagine you want to apply for like security, like net security at a big company like uh, Turbine or Blizzard or something like that. Um, what you would want is you want to make sure you understand how to protect yourself from a DDoS attack, what kind of protections you can have. So what you would then do is you would ideally set up protections and have other people DDoS you and see if they work. It's a great way to prove that your systems work. Um, I'm not going to take off the crown though, and I'm not going to take off the sword and the shield because the sword and the shield are awesome. Um, the sword being my Im imitation Mega Man sword. <laughs> but yeah. Take a break for just a second. I'll be right back. No problem. I like that our cleric's name is Dealing Death. Unfortunately, I can't make my. Alright, we're good. What do I think about gnomes? Uh, I love gnomes. I think gnomes are super cool, man. They're awesome. They're just an awesome race. Um, there were things I definitely disagreed with, so when we talked about it with the with regards to like the player council, when my time was on it, one of the things I disagreed with was the fact that a lot of the like the class or the racial features of the gnome kind of got rolled in the enhancement tree instead of actually being racial features, such as like their affinity for illusion spells and things. I didn't really like that, but it made sense in context because like I'm not entirely sure what else you would put in the tree. And if you did put other things in the tree, then you could have stuff like you know gnomes having plus like eight on saves versus spells or like really high illusion DCs, which I mean it's probably fine, but I still I understand why it wasn't put like that. Like it makes sense to me. Um, but the most important thing is that gnomes are not based off of the 3.5 gnome. They're based off of the f more cl or closer to the 5th edition gnome. Um, which means, oh my god, this Volcarum prophet keeps healing himself. What a jerk. So what it ne means is that they got the intelligence instead of the constitution bonus. Um, again, something I, I didn't really want, but I wasn't like angry enough to fight over it. I was like, whatever. Um... But yeah, so I really like the gnomes though. I've played, I played the, uh, my well, when the gnome first came out on day one, I TR'd into a gnome fighter and I played it and it was totally awesome because uh, gnome fighter is just an awesome, awesome character. If you haven't gotten a chance to play one, I highly recommend it. When are the last fighter can say enhancements coming out? Um, I don't know. Um, I've heard different things, so I'm not sure. Um, I pretty sure this is this is not council related um we've already stopped discussing it um but the new enhancements that are coming out um i'm pretty sure the reason that they didn't come out or the sorry that not the reason that they're going to be coming out at some point soon 
I don't know if it's with update 32 or if it's just going to be a patch a few weeks later. I think it's going to be a patch in the couple weeks after. I believe that was said in the patch notes of the last one. So I imagine in like one or two weeks from now we'll have the extra in fighter enhancements. They're very cool though. I can tell you that much. They're very, very cool. Um, they're not what I suggested, but they are very cool. So. Change a good death attack. A 30% less health deal. Oh yeah, it's way better. Uh, some people were upset with the fact that it, the change makes it so that, uh, or they're like, they took, they made the old bonus damage only on a Vorpal, but one, it makes it very synergistic with uh, single weapon fighting or great crossbow users, and additionally, that damage scales with melee power and can crit? What? So, yeah. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure when it's coming out, but I can tell you that it'll be wicked cool when it, oh god, the pain! Sorry, I had to scream there for a second. Okay, so there's actually a trick to this. Um, let me just, let me just, uh, super scorpions. Do you get your gear and start almost from scratch? Pretty much. Um, there are a couple items I don't get rid of. So, for example, I'll never get rid of armbands, the silence ones, because let me tell you something. You know what's bullshit? Abishai. Abishai are bullshit because they have delayed blast fireball, which is like super unfair, and it's really broken and it's overpowered. So, as a result, um. I keep those to deal with Abishai, specifically at this level, so I don't instantaneously die to Delayed Blast Fireballs. Um, so that is, those, that's an item that I keep. Um, but most other items, yeah, I kind of just do start fresh. That's why all my items are loot gen. Soothing Necklace of Charisma, Goggles of Blasting, all these Boots of Strength, Gloves of Potency. I like loot gen. I think randomly generated items are really fun. Um, and I like, I just like being able to have randomly generated items. I also do start out by crafting a bunch of stuff, though, generally, something that'll help me with my lives. For example, if I have, like, a good, um, if I want to make sure I have a good weapon or something like that to start out. Kind of does give you healing amp when you drink a potion. Welcome. I forgot to update it after the last one. We're at Raid the Volcurum, which I can share here. Oh, sorry, actually, we're finished this one. Uh, we're going to head to Oob, offering a blood next. Oh, God. Oh, God, I can't kill this last one. Um, if he mentioned it, then that's good. I just, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't talk about things that haven't been said yet. Because if I do, I'll lose, like, my spot on the council. And I can't have that. I need to have my, I need to have my, like, wicked power trip. I need to feel like I'm more powerful than the rest of you guys. So if I lose my spot, how can I do that? How can I trip on power? So... Gotta, I gotta have some way to power trip. But yeah, I do I do start out almost from scratch every life. Um, like I said, I do craft a couple items, so like crafted items I can't get rid of are things like Goggles of Secret Door Detection, because like, duh, Goggles of Secret Door Detection, and other items like Voice of the Master, because like, duh, Voice of the Master, dude. What, 5% bonus XP? Did I hear 5% bonus XP? Yeah, I think that's what I heard. Where's this scorpion? He just disappeared. Damn. Out of curiosity, I didn't get a chance to test the sound like I normally do before I start. Can you guys, like, hear my voice and also hear, like, the music and stuff in the background? Because I don't actually know. I didn't I didn't test it beforehand. And I feel like a jerk for not doing that. Which is something I probably should have done, but... Um... But yeah... I usually start from, like just fresh. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I can't, I don't know how much has been mention, mentioned, so I don't want to, like, go ahead and just be like, yeah, this is exactly what the enhancement's gonna be. But if he said that it's a, it's a thing that gives you healing amp when you drink a potion, it does, in fact, it is a thing that, you know, when you drink a potion, it does give you healing amp. I guess you can say that. Um, oh, that's because the song is just really quiet. Um, one of the things I can say I did have a hand in um, is that it's not healing amp, it's healing and repair amp. I don't know if I can say that, but I assume I can. Um, because I am super fed up with the way Warforged are treated as, like, second-class citizens, uh, of, of Stormreach. So think about it this way. So, like, when they think of making an item, they're like, Hey, damn, guys, let's make an item. Let's, what is it gonna have? Well, it's gonna have this stat and this stat, and it's like, oh, let's also make it have healing amp. Cool! And let's make a new item. Let's make it have devotion, because it's for healers. Cool! Let's make this and that. And then you're like, okay, guys, where's, where's the reconstruction item and the repair amp? Where's the repair amp? And then they're like, what do you mean repair amp? What's that stat? I've never heard of that. And I'm like, what? 
What do you mean? You don't know what the repair amp is. What are, what are we happening? So, it's something I got very frustrated with. Um, and so, I'll wait for everyone to get in before we start running, because this one you got to stay together. Um, you know, I, I, I'm like, ah, that, that just blows. Um, I made an entire video about it. It's on my YouTube channel about why Warforged kind of blow. Um, especially when it comes to like healing effects, because it's just they're not taken into consideration. So think about an effect like the Barbarian. So Barbarians get an ability called, like, the three abilities that heal themselves. They get increased metabolism, um, which, you know, essentially allows them to heal while they're raged. So while they're raged, they get fueled by their metabolism. Cool, sounds good. Um, but while they're raged, they get healed by their metabolism. So essentially they just, I guess, regenerate quickly or something is the whole idea behind the, uh, the ability. Um, but more importantly than it just being that that one, the next one over is called Weapon Bond. So in the Occult Slayer, um, you form a, a physical, or like a, sort of like a physical magical bond, a spiritual bond with your weapon. Um, and that bond is what makes it so that your character can, you know, do special effects. So using your Weapon Bond, you can like deal bonus damage, or you can, you know, whatever. You can do all sorts of different things, which is cool. But the big problem is Weapon Bond also allows you to heal. But for some reason, Weapon Bond is positive energy healing. Which makes no sense to me, because if it's, it's a bond to your weapon. You would think that Warforged, a weapon, would bond to their weapon a little bit more. And that it wouldn't be positive energy healing, that the Warforged could reconstruct itself using this Weapon Bond. But nope! It's positive energy healing! Because why would you even consider for a second that it would not be positive energy healing? So, Warforged get shafted again. And then, uh, finally, you have Blood Strength. Blood Strength is the war, uh, the Barbarian ability, where it makes it so every time you kill a monster, uh, you heal for 20, which scales with healing amp and melee power, and every time you hit, you have a 12% chance to heal for half of your Barbarian level, which is great. Healing for half your Barbarian level is awesome, because, you know, you hit all the time. This also works with Glancing Blows, which makes it a very, very powerful ability. Um, however, uh, this is not the only... Th uh, the issue with this is that um, Blood Rage... Uh, is it blood? Is it blood rage? Is, is that what I said before? Uh, I think it is. Anger blood. Anyway, heal heal amp helps reduce contract penalty for positive energy healing. It does not. It does not reduce the penalty for contract negative energy healing. That is confusing. So they're multiple. They're multiplicative, not additive. So to put it in perspective, if I am a warforged, I have a 50% reduction on healing. It's 50% less healing, not 50% reduced healing. That might sound confusing, like it's strange wording, but it's important. Because what that means is that if you have 50 healing amp on a Warforged, you are not going from, you know, you're down 50, now you're back up 50. No, no, no. That number is cut in half. So if you have 50 healing amp on a Warforged, then you get healed for 75% of the full amount that you get healed. If you want to get healed for full as a Warforged, you need 100 healing amp. Because it's cut in half. Because it's a 0.5 multiplier on the amount that you get healed. They are separate multipliers. So what you have to do is you have to take Warforged Healer's Friend to get it bumped up to 80%, and then you're still knocking down 80% every time. So to put this in, as, an, as an example, if I get healed for 100 health and I have 100 healing amp, then I would get healed for 200 health because I'm increasing that amount by 100%. Uh, and then if, so if I'm a human, I get... 100 health. Now what you would think is, oh, if you're a Warforged, well, because you're down 50, you go up an extra 100, so you're at 150% healing amp, as opposed to 200 like a human. But that is not the case. Instead, that 100 becomes a 200 from your 100% healing amp, and then it's just automatically cut in half by being a Warforged. The effects are not additive, they're multiplicative. So healing amp has a reduced effect. And on Bladeforged, it's even worse, because Bladeforged have an additional modifier based on their race that's an extra 5% off. Now, that might not sound like a big deal that's an extra 5%, because you're like, oh, well, what's what's 5% between friends? Um, but the big issue with that being an extra 5% on top of the amount that it is, is it reduces it again by another separate multiplier. So you apply a... You do your healing amp, you get your final healing number, then you half it with your 50%, and then you apply another 95% multiplication. So Warforged Healer's Friend on a Blade Forged, instead of going to, through effectively the way the math works out, instead of being 50% um, then into 60%, um, or sorry, 50%, 60%, uh, 70%, 80% healing, instead of actually getting all the way up to like 80% healing, um, it actually goes only up to 72% healing. So it's even worse. So that's essentially my issue, um, is that 
there's healing amp everywhere, but no, that's not even the point. Uh, blood strength, where when you kill targets and you get health, I don't understand how this is a positive energy effect, because it literally involves the slaughter and murder of people. You have to kill people to get this health. Yeah, and it works. You can test it yourself. Play a Warforged, get, uh, go get your ship buff, and slap on... Uh, okay, cool. We're going to start on uh, House... No, uh, Desert Caravan. Desert Caravan's the first one, so it's just in, in the desert. So you can do Desert Caravans next. Um, yeah, it's very easy to test. Um, just make your Warforged, slap on your Purple Dragon Knight Gauntlets for 60 healing amp, uh, get your ship buff for another 20, and then bam, and then all of a sudden you're at 80 healing amp, and if you're healing for 100, you should get 180 as a, sorry, 180 as a regular human, and then as a Warforged, you're only getting... Uh, 50 off that, so you should get 130, but you don't get 130, you get 90. And then your mind is going to be confused and you don't understand why, and that's why. I apologize if I am actually blowing anyone's mind, and they're like, Whoa! but that is the way that it currently works. Um, but yeah, Desert Carrier Man. Uh, can't. Yes. So yeah, so that's why something like Blood Strength, as I said, the reason is because thematically it doesn't make sense to me. The whole point of Blood Strength is that, yeah, it does increase it, but the problem is the increase is still reduced, right? So like saying that Healing Amp makes it better is not a very good solution because Healing Amp and then also seven action points makes it decent. Exactly, that's one reason nobody plays a Warforged. People could deal with the minus to stats, but just having to handle, like, all the extra the, the, the extra baggage of... Unless you can repair yourself efficiently, um, you have to um, go ahead and you put seven points into healers for, or in the Warforged tree to get healer's friend, which a lot of people, specifically Barbarians, don't do. Barbarians will not do that. Um, because if you're playing as a Barbarian, um, why you would rather have 39 points in Ravager so you can get Blood Strength and then 41 points in uh, in Frenzy Berserker so you can still get Storm's Eye uh, and have the insane damage which doesn't leave any room to play as a Warforged. Of course you obviously have to make sacrifices when you play a Warforged because you get the other benefits. Being completely immune to um, you know energy drain and things like that. It's not like you get nothing from playing a Warforged. Like, I'm not saying that. Um, but it just is frustrating that Effects that are from class abilities that are not positive are treated as being positive, right? So, and that's why I said, like, Blood Strength is my biggest example because the whole point of Blood Strength is as you are murdering people for entertainment, you're getting your health back from pretty much renewed energy. You're just like, blah, you get strengthened. Um, no, they took away Warforged Poison Immunity. They can still take damage from Poison Traps, um, and they're affected by magical poisons. So, that doesn't work anymore. All that uh, there are a lot of traps in the game where Warforged were um, completely immune to, but when they added poison damage in in one of our previous updates, um, several of them don't account or f don't account for that. Um, yeah, so blood strength again, where it's it's about murdering people. For some reason, it doesn't give you repair as well. It only gives you positive. Um, oh, Volcour implant, right? I have to get rid of this disease. Um, Similarly, stuff like, um, like I said, the weapon bond, you know, it, where your bond, it's healing through the bond w with your weapon, but for some reason that counts as positive energy, even though it's, you're just, it's your connection with your weapon. It's no, there's no positive energy there. Um, and even the metabolism, and this is where it's important to bring in the lore of the game, um, technically Warforged do not regenerate hit points. However, in, in the past, um, to deal with the fact that people going unconscious were essentially, it was the same thing as being dead if nobody in your party could actually heal you. Um, very early into the game, they made it so that humans regenerated health when they got below 10 if they stabilized, and Warforged did the same thing. And if you actually mouse over the icon that you get that has your health regenerating, it says that they're like nanobots or whatever working on you. Um, like your, your self-repair systems are, are activated. Which means Warforged can self-repair, which means Impriest, or sorry, the fast metabolism from Frenzy Berserker would affect a Warforged in repair sense because they are repairing themselves, not positive healing. But it was completely glossed over and just forgotten about. Uh, and this is not only, this is, right, and I still like playing Warforged, and I will still play them. It just feels weird and shallow and silly for the fact that you can't 
it, that these things weren't really considered or thought about. Maybe they were considered and thought about. Maybe there is an actual reason. I'd like to. I'd love to know that. Um, but even more importantly, that's not even getting into the fact that uh, there's not parity between the actual spells themselves. And to give you an example, um, if I'm playing as a Warforged, no matter what Warforged you play, if you have used Magic Device, you're not carrying around Reconstruction Scrolls. And the big reason is because Reconstruction Scrolls uh, don't do anything other than heal you. But Heal Scrolls get rid of all your status effects. So I use Heal Scrolls because i got to get rid of all these different status effects. Oh, I just pop Heal Scroll. What? I'm poisoned? No problem. Boom, Heal Scroll. It's gone. Even if I'm playing Warforged, I'll just pop a Heal Scroll because it's way easier. Um, but if you're playing as... Uh, you know, but if you want to use repair spells, it doesn't work the same way. Reconstruct is significantly inferior. Sure, it gives you an attack speed boost, but the attack speed boost does not stack with haste. Oh, sorry, man. Uh, I'll heal you. Here, everyone come to the middle for a quick rebuff on the song. The healing song. So that's what I mean. Again, it's 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 not so much that like they're bad. It's just that they're, I guess, thought of less. Is more the way I think about it. Man, I need to update this quest more. We're on desert caravan. I'm gonna share this. Hey, um, Slimgar, would you be able to hit the guys on the top shelf there on the ledge? I guess I don't have a lot of range. So yeah, that's essentially the thing. I know magical versus natural poisons. I, I totally get that. Um, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not against the fact that Warforged have to make some concessions to be healed by healing magic. It's that the problem is that using repair magic is pointless. Uh, the only time you use a repair magic is likely if you're playing a Warforged artificer. Other than that, or, or a sorcerer, if you're not playing one of those, there's no reason for you to, to invest in repairs because if you can use a uh, uh, blah, blah. if you use a reconstruction scroll, you might as well use a heal scroll because it'll save you from more situations. That's essentially like my where my mental block comes in. This one right here, yeah, accelerated metabolism. While raging, you heal for an extra two d six heal health points. It even says health. It doesn't say positive energy. It even says health. Or p hit points. But it's positive, so. I understand why it makes sense. Uh, in the tree, it's there's a lot of it that affects positive healing amplification. All the cores give you positive he healing amplification. Um, again, to make Barbarians a little bit stronger. However, the issue with that, again, is positive healing amplification. Rage. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'll stop, like, complaining. And uh, just play the game now. <laughs> but that's why I'm like, even situations, I really wanted to play a Warforged Bard, and I was going to, instead of playing the human that I'm playing right now. But the problem is, playing a Warforged Bard means I'd have to invest points in the Warforged tree just to get healing back. Whereas, playing as a r human Bard, I can put points to get extra healing instead of trying to re recoup some of my healing. Man, Molina's just tearing it up out here. Does he need a haste? Yeah, he needs a haste. Let's give a buff going on over here. Yeah, man, I love Warforged. Okay, think about it this way. Uh, <clears throat> you're going to go out there and you're going to play, like, mediocre at best video games out there, you know? Um, there's no neutral healing amplification, but there is neutral healing in the game. There's several spots where it is. The first one is store-bought potions. Uh, store-bought potions do have neutral healing. Um, so if you buy... If you have one of these suckas right here, the gold seal uh, elixirs of superior healing, they heal you for hit point damage. So it's a it's not a positive energy effect, which is great because if you're Warforged and you buy them out of the store, you don't get shafted. Uh, additionally, paladins. When paladins lay on hands, it's neutral. It's not technically neutral. There's actually a lot of bugs with paladin lay on hands. That's pretty much the only reason why I can see it is if they use the same code they use for lay on hands. There's weird bugs you can abuse that I'm not going to tell you about to get a lot of extra healing from your lay on hands <laughs> if you're playing as a warforged character <laughs> um, there's some there's some scaling issues I'll just I'll just I'll just put it that way the scaling issues um, but regardless of that um, there's a lot of games out there that are like 
Mediocre at best. And all these mediocre games, you know what they don't have? Uh, robots. You're like, oh man, I'm gonna go play Lord of the Rings Online. I'm gonna be as a hobbit, a brave hobbit guardian, standing up for the people of the Shire. You'll travel all the way across, you know, the Lone Lands and the Trollshaws through the Mines of Moria, you know, stuff like that. You'll be able to do all these crazy adventures, following down Frodo and the team. But you're not a robot. You're some chump. You're some four, or sorry, three and a half foot tall little guy that's like, yeah, I got like a big shield and armor. And then, and then if they got transported in the DDO world, there'd be some Warforged who would like pick them up by their head and just look at them and then crush them like a, like a can of soda. Okay? Like, you can play robots in this game. Did, did I tell you that? Did you know you can play robots in Dungeons & Dragons Online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, oh, Dungeons & Dragons Online, a fantasy video game taking place in the fictional city of Stormreach, a city besought by magic and a, a demon invasion on the rise. Take your spot as an intrepid hero, or like in one of the group of intrepid heroes out there. You know, Johan, the human cleric, you know, follower of the Silver Flame. Uh, you know, and it's like uh, Annette, the the gnome illusionist, or something. And it's like all these different characters. And it's like, and then you have Smash, the Warforged barbarian, the seven and a half foot tall robot that just killed the boss anyway, before anyone could even get there. Like robots, dude. All right. There's a there's a song or there's a, a cartoon some of you guys may have may have watched as you were a kid. Um, let me let me see if I can get it here. Um. So there's a there was a cartoon when I was growing up. It was called uh, Megas XLR. Uh, ooh, seven constitution for level 14. That's a pretty nice item. Jump change, though. It's for jumps. In the th in the, th the song, the theme to it, and I quote, We dig giant robots. You dig giant robots. And finally, chicks dig giant robots. It's pretty important. Uh, the next quest that we're going to be doing, yeah, yeah, re-grab your ship buffs and stuff, and then the quest after that is going to be um, the spawn of Whisperdoom in House Fjarlun. Got to be specific as to where we're going. Specific as to where we're going. Uh, ooh, seven constitution for level 14. That's a pretty nice item. Jump change, though. It's for jumps. Put that one. The gallon of acetone? No, it's still there being explosive and flammable behind me. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. The problem is I don't have any, you know, industrial strength epoxies I need to reduce. Yeah, I have freedom of movement, so I can pass it out. So yeah, man. It's just giant robots. I'm telling you, giant robots are amazing. Especially robots like Byron Sword Scout? Oh, I, I like Corthos Solar, but Sword Scout's just a, a little bit of a better name. Because it's all, it's what he does. He, he's a Sword Scout. He swords and he scouts. It's like a perfect description of a barbarian. Because sometimes he's out there scouting, and then sometimes he's out there swording. I'm going to quickly do a repair, quickly do a good cell action. Mm, insightful balance. That's not just insightful sheltering. And that's electric resistance. And that's a bad item. Oh, I'm selling faster. Oh, no. Uh, impact of... Oh, God. These items are disappearing from my inventory. What is happening? What is this? Oh, mighty bracers of... Uh, ring of... Mm, nope. Nope. Oh, that's gone. Bam. Look at that. I don't want to listen to this song. I do want to listen to this song, though. I'm using a bang of Siberis. I'm not having an oven rager. It's fill up an XP. The synergy with harmonic resonating and sonic mobility is pretty good. Yeah, man. I agree with that one. It's always... you got to find the little bonuses that a lot of people don't think about. The harmonic resonance is amazing. I'm planning on doing it all the way to 30. Although, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think Fate Singer is the, the best one for the bard. You see, Fate Singer is pretty good. Uh, if I take a look here. So out of Fate Singer, you get nothing that actually buffs your ability to murder people with your music. And that's essentially my problem with Fate Singer. All this stuff here, nothing that benefits my murdering people with music. Basically, all I get is charisma and then the base stuff here, like the extra little bit of a charisma and stuff like that. And 
I guess, plus one arcane cast level and stuff like that. Uh, but I don't get extra mana from this, which kind of sucks. And I'm not going to be meleeing too often with Harmonic Resonance, which kind of blows. Um, that's not where I want to go. I was at the wrong quest. Uh, instead, I think what I'm probably going to do is go Draconic Incarnation. I'll probably, I'm Acid right now, I'll probably respec it out of uh, Acid into Electric and be Electric and Sonic. I mean, I might do Acid. We'll have to see where it goes. Um, oh, my eyes are burning. Uh, that feels good. But yeah, so I'm probably going to do that. And the most important thing when you're picking up any kind of uh, spell casting dude... Oh, 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 oh. Ugh, everybody dies. Oh, Molina got there with the cleave before I could. What a jerk. Um, one of the most important things you have to pick up if you're going to be playing any form of uh, any form of spell caster, I highly recommend you go ahead and go into Divine Crusader. Pick yourself up in Pyrene Magic. This makes it so every time you hit a dude with a spell... Uh, or, sorry, cast a fire, light, or healing spell, you get 2% sac sacred bonus to universal spell power and 1% to critical hit chance. So you pick up Empyrean Magic, and then if you have p extra room, you pick up something simple like Avenging Light or something that costs like 3 mana, and you just throw it constantly. Thanks for sticking around, Ogmort. It's always good to see you. I, I, I do catch in or tune into your stream sometimes. I just don't chat very often when I'm actually in stream. I always edge you guys on. I'm like, hey guys, please chat with me because I want to have something to bounce off of. But I don't... Um, I don't myself chat that often, because I'm a huge hypocrite. It depends on the stream. Sometimes I feel like I do, but... Mm. This bill's going all the way to 30, though. Probably Draconic Incarnation, because going Shout, Energy Burst, Greater Shout, is going to be hilarious! Shout, Greater Shout, into... Where's Just Gonna Whack It? Where's Just Gonna Whack It? Oh, he's over there. He's fighting everybody. He's fighting everybody! Too bad I killed everything first. Ah, uh, jump! Yeah. Yeah, that's what we all want. We all want Rainbow Road music right now. You can't get the heal on everybody! Whoop. Oh, I killed the guy in the back. Whoopsie. Ah, well. So I just gotta kill somebody. Um. I used to have other low-level spells. I took Detect Secret Doors. I just don't like having to swap on like something for True Seeing, and I don't have True Seeing yet, so... I don't know if I ever get True Seeing. Do Bards get True Seeing? I don't think so. Although, now that I think about it, I don't actually know. I feel like I should, because I say stuff like, Bard is my favorite character class, and then I just like, don't know anything about the class. I do know that I can hit for 700 damage. That's why if you look at the title and you're like, what, Stream Tom for cereals thinks that, like, Spell Singer Bards are better than Swashabuckler Bards? How can he even say that? Swashabuckler Bards are clearly so much better than than Spell Singer Bards. I mean, if you're playing a Swashabuckler Bard, you only have to take six levels of Bard, and it's basically like you're playing a full Swashabuckler Bard. And that's, like, totally true. You can do that, um, and it's the same thing. What I find very interesting with this is I can kind of, like, empty rooms in nearly instantaneously. Sure, I don't get some of like the AoE freezes and crap like that. Plus, I can't take most of my level as rogue or fighter. But with this type of character, why would I want to? Look at this. I just I just go like, boo, and explode stuff easily. Got tons of mana. I can heal my team, support everybody. But the most important thing, the most important thing about all of that, is uh, I kill people in like one hit with spell magic, which is super cool. I'm a big fan of that spell magic. So you're like, man, inflammatory headline. Yeah, man. It's inflammatory but because it's right. And you guys know it's right. That's the best part. I don't have to convince you guys. You guys know that it's just it's better. Because you can just see it. See it before your eyes. Now, it's true. It's true. I haven't tested this into epics. And uh, it does require testing into epics. Uh, so I will be doing that. I really want to test out Master of Music. So. In DD lore, there are no Sonic-oriented dragons. Um... This is a tough one. So, what you have to do is you have to go get yourself. There's two, three, mm. there's two 3.5 books on this subject. Um, one 3.5 book you should consider looking at is the Draconomicon. It's very con uh, close to the Necronomicon, but it's like for dragons. Uh, so that means it's like going to be a great read already. But, uh, excuse me, I should be like belching it on my microphone. Anyways, um, the Draconomicon contains a lot of information about various different types of dragons. And then there's also the Blood of Dragons book. 
Both of these are for 3.5. I can't remember which one's more useful, but one of them actually does have a list of dragons organized by, like, their type and things like that. I don't know if there is a Sonic Dragon. I think there is, but I have to pull it up here. I could probably do that. Oh, God. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm going to totally AFK here. Not AFK, Alt-Tab. Oh, God. All right. Let's load up the D drive. No, get, up, get back. Ooh, there's a treasure chest here. Ugh, so if you're like, oh, what's happening? Don't worry, I'm, I'm, I got it, team. I can do both at the same time. I can look stuff up and play the game. Not fast, though. If I want to be, like, top kills, like, top of the damage meter, I have to make sure I'm, like, paying a little bit more attention. Am I top of the damage meter? Nope. Just going, my cat had a big, pretty big head start. Ooh! That's what I call stat padding. See this big full room that I didn't get any crits on, and everything made their saves? Yeah, stat padding. Uh, source material. There we go. D. Dragonomicon. Oh, Book of Dragons. Oh, God. Oh, God, this book is so big. Oh, uh, is this going to have the information I want? Diet. Cool. Where's the dragon colors? Dragon colors? Dragon eternal navity? Dragon colors. Where's the Where's the book? Dragon's body, new players, blah blah blah, feats, spells, dragon items, prestige classes, dragons in party. Oh, there's actually rules in playing with a dragon in your party? Man, I should have just, I should have like read this book instead of just saying no to the guy that wanted to do that in my campaign. He's like, can I play as a dragon? I'm like, oh, you mean like a half dragon? He's like, no, 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 I want to play as like a dragon. I'm like, no, no, you can't do that. Probably should have read this book before just immediately saying no. Which is what I did. I just said no, but... Okay, maybe it's not this book. Hmm. Yeah, find it. If you can figure out which book it is. Because um, there is a book I referenced. It's one of these ones. Um, and the reason I say I referenced it is because I played in a game where I played as a sorceress who was taking the dragon feats, and it was very important because I was taking the dragon feats because the character... No, 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 it actually had players as dragons, so... It would be cool to have a dragon in the party. But I actually had a character who was... Oh, there's nothing here. I had a, a character once when I was playing a Dungeons & Dragons game, and my character was a woman from a you know small town farm, small farm town, and uh, her mother was actually a heir, like a royal heir, but the, the mother didn't know it because she, um, she, or like she sort of knew, uh, but she was like a bastard of like a dragon. Anyway, long story short, the main character is like, has dragon blood in them. So when they're coming of age, which is when a sorcerer usually gets their magic is their coming of age point, you know, that they're, they're somewhere through their adolescence, their puberty. Um... My character, as opposed to just getting magic, which is, like, already cool enough, but instead of just getting magic, also acquired, like, dragon powers and abilities, like dragon claws and dragon breath and stuff like that. And the dragon that I picked that would fit the best, one, because I think it's cool, was force, because I think force dragons are awesome, because um, force dragons are just cool. They look very cool if you haven't looked at or seen one. If you Google uh, force dragon, if you Google image search, Force Dragon, you'll see the very cool picture that's in the Epic Level Handbook for 3.5, um, which is where I first saw it. And man, I'm a huge fan. Murder! Oh, he ran away. What? I'm supposed to murder this guy. Okay. So while everybody's here, then I'm going to cast all my buffs. No. 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 Yeah, that's a good song. So I played it myself as a character who was like had slight dragon powers. Again, the reason I picked it is largely for like flavor because I think the force dragons are cool, and also so that way I could have like some uh, some better selection over certain spells and things. Oh, you found her already? Southwest. Yep, southwest. Nice. So yeah, dragons. I don't know if there are any Sonic-based dragons. I just know in DDO there aren't. Uh. Or at least there aren't that you can play as as a Draconic Incarnation and get dr dragon powers. Oh, shit. Oh, what? My freedom of movement is gone. No, and my strength is so low. I'll never get out of this web. I rolled a 20. Okay, it's all good. It's all good, team. It's all good. I'm going to put my freedom of movement back on. How does this happen? 
Did the spiders dispel me or something and take away my freedom of movement? Alright, good job, team. Good job. Treasure chest. Oh, it needs lockpick. I'm out. Cool. Next is the House J level 11 quests. Starting with the enemy within. Blasting three goggles! That's what I'm talking about for level 14. I'll take that. Huge fan of blasting goggles. So I can blast my enemies in the face. Yeah, I've always wanted to do the half work so you can do like the lock picking with your fist. <laughs> hey, what to do, Virtual Gib? How are you doing today? What's uh, what's the story? What's the scoop? What's the score? How's how's it going? How how how's your how's your day doing? Maybe I should just calm down. I'll just stay calm. Okay, guys, I'll just stay calm. All right, so we're uh, we're gonna do the quest Enemy Within, and uh, this quest today it's uh. It's pretty exciting. Uh, the The whole premise behind this is that uh, there's Annabelle de Jurasco there. Annabelle de Jurasco is the woman that you save in the Necromancer's Doom. Uh, she is she's not really an important character, but she is a part of the story because you do rescue her on Corthos Island from the quest Necromancer's Doom, uh, where she is of course being held by the evil Necromancer Jack B. Drexelhan. I'm not sure at which point he became an evil Necromancer, but at just some point during the Corthos storyline, he became an evil Necromancer. Anyway, and so. You save Annabelle de Jurasco, and then Annabelle de Jurasco, who had been kidnapped before, has now gotten an affinity for understanding kidnappings at a higher level than some other people might understand. And so, the enemy within, the premise behind this quest, is that Annabelle de Jurasco uh, has been a become aware that many delegates have been captured, and so you have to go free them and save their lives. Now, this quest is absolutely wonderful. If you happen to have fire-based weaponry, ooh! Baby, look at this. Oh, sonic damage. It's not fire-based, but I mean, it still it gets the job done. Uh, but if you do have fire-based weaponry, whoa, picking up everything. Um, fire-based weaponry or spells, any kind of fire, this is where you. This is going to be your favorite quest in the game. This quest, uh, on top of the one in the orchard um, that I can't remember the name of, under the tree. That I, I do it every life. I just, I just don't remember the name. You know, the one with the two brothers and the Doom Sphere and the ice monsters and the frozen abyss. It also has amazing music if you've never listened to the music that's in there. Ooh, I like that. Full room clear. Oh, we have a rogue soul. I, I want to wait to get the, the traps cleared. Yeah. I'm going to drink my beer while I wait for the traps to get clear. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. I don't know where it is in here. It's in like the Book of Dragons or something? Races of Stone, that doesn't seem right. I'm looking through all these books, I have them all. Tome of Magic, Tome of Blood. Oh, Races of the Dragon, I think that's that one sounds right. Oh god. Oh, 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 it's so hard to use. Um, contents. That's what I want. Ooh, I can't read this. Let's make this bigger. Dragon blood subtype. Let's try that. Let's, let's... No, it's not the one. No. Mm. Oh, holding the beer label out to go for the endorsement deal? Mmm. I really like when I drink my old-style Pilsner, produced by Molson. Uh, it's such a delicious beer. You know, it really, on a long day, it really quenches the thirst and, you know, gives me the kind of relaxation I need. When I want a beer, I go for old-style Pilsner. There you go. And now I'm just going to wait for the money to roll in. Don't worry. You guys are going to have to tell me where the trap boxes are because I haven't played in so long. Oh, there's like traps here. They're, the box is in between.
Do this. Um, there we go. Twitch isn't working. No, dude. That's terrible. Oh, man. If it makes well, oh man, I wish I could like change that and make your Twitch work, but I just, I just, I just can't because that's not how the internet works. What are we missing? Oh, one dude. Oh, did you turn it off and on again? Did you try turning it off and on again? I always recommend doing that. If something doesn't work, just try turning it off and on again. Hundred sixty percent of the time, it works every time. So. Oh yeah. Now, the, I think the thing that I would promote the most would probably be Jameson, because I just drink Jameson all the time, especially when I'm doing the stream. Which reminds me, I need to get some Jameson. So while my team is actually going to kill this stuff, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to hit, give me some Shift R. My team really likes it when I cast my Shift R spell. And while that's happening, I'm going to go pour myself a little bit of this, this here Jameson. Mmm, Jameson, triple distilled Irish whiskey. Oh, yeah. That hits the spot. See, it's always the first one. That's hard to do. Anything after that's way easier. I find, especially like myself, it's like almost a problem. Ah, I say easier, but I'm still having trouble taking it. Um, I, I always, I that's one of the problems I have is that some people like they'll go and they'll have like a drink or something in their body will like kind of figure out when they have to stop because what they'll do is when they they know when they have to stop because when they have to stop drinking is when they start throwing up everywhere I don't do that I don't do that at all so because my body knows I don't ever need to stop drinking my body is just like oh what did you just like throw up or like are you not feeling too good because you just drank too much well don't worry buddy uh your stomach's made of iron and you'll just continue to consume and I do every time and then I wake up with no memory of what happened. Uh, and then I, in my living room, or not in my living room, in my hallway, we have a chalkboard. And the chalkboard is reserved exclusively for when people get drunk, you just write down what they say, and when they don't remember it, you just remind them in the morning, being like, hey, do you remember when you said this? And it's like, uh... Yeah. Can we not talk about what I said? Talisker? I'll have to. Assuming it's available in my area. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, I give myself my mana regen spell. Yeah, mana regen. When this door opens, I'm gonna kill all these skeletons. So good. Yeah. Spellsinger Bard can't kill that fast. Gotta love me some Spellsinger Bard. It was like a treasure chest. Talisker. I'll have to give it a shot at some point. The problem is, this Jameson was a gift. A gift is great because I don't, I don't buy a lot of alcohol because I don't have ton of, ton of the monies. You know, I gotta save my monies for the honeys. If you know what I'm saying. I gotta make sure I got the money for the, for the women. As Homer Simpson says it, uh, first you get the sugar. Then you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the women. So, you know, I'm trying to use my 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 money to acquire acquire the power, then acquire the women. Hmm. Orange dragons are sonic dragons. Interesting. I mean, I've never I've never heard of that before, but that doesn't sound wrong. So. Give me that crest of the octopus. Wah. Can I get this all in one? Yeah! All eight in one. Screw you! Did that skeleton cast a sp some kind of spell on itself? No, it didn't. I thought it did. I just like screaming at stuff. That's one of the things that's really satisfying about also about playing this, is the constant screaming sounds. I could probably turn down the music. Oh, I can turn up DDO, actually. That's something I should be doing. Because I had it turned down because I was like listening to a podcast earlier. 
Just kill the DDO music. Oh, that's combat sounds. I'm gonna kill the music. Boom. So you can hear the constant screaming sounds. So you know what it's like to be inside my head. Just constant screaming, non-stop. It never ends. Get some of the good stuff and stick to DDO. I don't know, man. I'm gonna tell you. I'm telling you guys something. To tell you guys something. It's a. I guess it's not really a secret. You know, I'm. Uh, I stream Tom. You know, I'm currently in a bachelor stage of my life. You know, I'm not. I'm not chained down by, by a woman. You know, I'm not got myself caught up in one of them polygamous relationships either. You know, I'm, uh, I'm just. I'm a free, free man, like a free bird. I'm basically like Leonard Skinner's song, and even though it's unrelated. But I'm a free man. But you know, I did. Uh, I did meet this nice, nice young lady. We went out a couple days ago. Hit it off. I thought it went pretty well. You know. So you know, you know, maybe, maybe things are turning up for your old pal Strim Jam. Ooh, might, uh, might go on a a second outing. You know, we'll see how it goes. It's difficult because the the problem I can see with a lot of people how they'd want like want to like. That I that I want to date and stuff is that they'd have to actually consider spending more than like small amounts of time with me, like more small amounts of time. Like you guys only have to see me once a week, so that's why you're not like, oh my god, this guy's like totally intolerable because you only see me in small doses, like once a week. So it's like no big deal. But could you imagine if you saw me like more than once a week? Oh, just, oh I wouldn't want to subject anyone to that. But apparently, some women can handle it. So howling dragons. That's interesting. That's another thing I was also going to note. I'm getting almost no lag. Just nothing. Nada. Zip. Zero. Zada. Zippity doo da. Who got the crests? We should bring them over here. Um, getting no lag whatsoever. So that's kind of cool. I'm very happy with that. Uh. I don't know where that book was. Die, your mesh, the cold. If only I made a crit. Oh, I can test it again. That's not the spell I wanted to cast. Ah! So yeah, man. I'm uh, I'm, I'm very lucky right now, you know. I found I found somebody who was like, "Hey, do you want to go on a date?" And they were like, "Yeah." And then I was like, "Hey, we went on that date, and it was pretty good. You you, do you want to do it again?" They were like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "Cool." Cool, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's always good. I feel, I feel good. Well, I didn't shave. I still need to shave. I got to do that at some point. It's weird. There's that point where your facial hair goes from being frustrating and irritating to actually being like comfortable. It's hard to describe, but it's kind of what I'm going through right now as well. Could imagine what it would be like to be like a dwarf or something. Uh, the next quest will be. Uh, the one at the north side, with the hobgoblin and the gate of nightmares. I I I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, dreams of insanity. That's the one. I don't know why I can remember the quest locations, like the actual names of the locations, but not the names of the quests. I feel like I'm completely insane. Ooh, cold absorption twenty percent. I'll take that. Why not? And Sonic Guard three. Might not seem like it's that good, but cold absorption's pretty good, especially if I have like 20%. Introduced a friend of his DDO some time ago. One of his friend's biggest complaints has been too few dragons. After all, it is called Dungeons and Dragons. Well, you have to understand, you can't just have dragons everywhere, right? So, dragons are legendary creatures that are extremely rare, that reproduce extremely infrequently, and the, one of the reasons they reproduce extremely infrequently is because there's constant infighting and jealousy. Most of the dragons are evil, right? So, if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, most of the dragons are going to be evil. Most of them aren't going to be... They're not great at sharing, you know? They're not very cooperative. Um, stuff like that. They're very territorial. And then on top of that, they're extremely powerful. So, there can't be a lot of dragons, because if there was a lot of dragons, there'd be dragons everywhere, and then there'd be no people. And then if there's no people, the dragons don't really care any about anything, because they don't have, like, people to make the piles of gold that they would like to collect. So, uh, the way I think about it is, yes, there's not a lot of dragons, but I mean, there's a dragon on Korthos Island, 
And then the next dragon after that is in um, Mired in Kobolds. Then the dragons after that, there's three dragons in Giant Hold Tor. Uh, oh, there's also Vila the Red Dragon, of course, which is, you know, a dragon. So you can't you can't forget about Vila the Red Dragon. I'm gonna heal just gonna whack it soon. Who's hitting me? Oh, this guy. So like I but I like I said, I do understand the concept that, you know, the dragons are like that they are rare. Sure. And it does it does kind of suck when you start playing the game and you're like Dungeons and Dragons where are the dragons but like <sighs> dragons are rare because they're like hard to kill and they're dangerous right like I don't know think about it if like that's why you spend most of your time doing dungeons and things as opposed to dragons because dungeons anything can really be classified as a dungeon you could consider like almost like a shop like like if you go into a shop if there's some kind of event that happens there where you have to fight monsters it's probably a dungeon or so some kind of silly tile puzzle even if it's just like a regular shop which a lot of quests happen to be well, not a lot of them but some of them for sure um, think about a quest like like uh, Yalthun's quest in uh, in the harbor in the harbinger of madness chain that quest is absolutely awesome it's so cool right where you get to go into like the 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 mind flayer's house he has all the sculptures everywhere it's really cool but at the end of the day it's not a dungeon it's just a mansion but it's like totally a dungeon and nobody would dispute the fact that it's a dungeon i mean yes there is some some validity to the fact that it's just like a linear path with like or like you know a branching out area that you explore and then deal damage to monsters in but you know what I mean. But I can't understand. I can understand your friend's complaint. What you got to do is you got to tell him, hey, man, it gets better. You know? The cool, the really cool shit, that's like you're talking about your raids or your really intricate dungeons and designs. Got him. Got him. It's all about your very, very cool dungeons and things. Um... I think it's like good ones to as an example. Like one of my favorite dungeons of the game that is pretty much just straight D it's like pure DDO. Like if you could inject DDO into your bloodstream. Um, one of my favorite dungeons by far is the pit. And I love the pit because it's just something you can't do in other games. Um, there's just it's just something you can't do in other games. You can play DDO all you want, or you can play any other game out there, any other MMO on the market, and you can't get a, a quest that's like the pit because the pit is convoluted, it's frustrating, it infuriates players, it's confusing. The map is like it's literally like a hand-drawn map that you would get from your dungeon master if you were actually trying to do that on a piece of, on like on a, on a table. So yes, the map is frustrating to deal with, but that would be literally okay. You're playing Dungeons and Dragons around a table with your friends, and a guy says, "Hey, I need you to restart the intake system. Here's what it looks like," and they give it to you. And they give you a map, and that's the map that you get for the pit. It's detailed, it's marked out, it doesn't tell you floors, it doesn't really explain what's going on, and you just gotta figure it out as you go. Like I said, it's frustrating, it's infuriating, it's full of puzzles and jumping segments and climbing segments. And it's one of my favorite quests, because it's like, like I said, it's like, it's, it's like if you took DDO, and you distilled it into like, some kind of heroin-like object and injected it into your arm, that's the pit. I, d I don't know if that's the best comparison I want to make, but... Like it's it's pure DDO. If you like, if you refine it, if you put it through a still, you know, you took out all the impurities. That's it's the pit, in my mind. Um, maybe I, I'm not gonna lie. I've never done Temple of Elemental Evil Part Two because I couldn't figure out how to beat Tele Temple of Elemental Evil Part One. I don't remember who did it. Was it Nobom? Or no, Bob. Uh, I don't remember who did it. I, I remember watching the interview for it and how they talked about how the pit was essentially almost like a throwaway dungeon. How they realized they they're just like ah oh, no we, we we probably can't do this. So they were gonna throw the pit away. Like the story behind it's really cool. How they were like yeah we're pretty much just gonna throw away the the pit because they didn't they didn't think they could actually do it with like their their budget sort of. They were like. And so the pit was something where they were going through like old dungeons that were going to be scrapped before the game came out, and um, the pit was essentially like they're going through. And the lead, the lead dev at the time was like, "Hey, this this dungeon's really cool. Somebody finished making this, and they did it." Okay, some they're not done yet, so I'm gonna go help them.
Just reactivate the security system as the beginning of the quest instead of the end. It's not stupid. You have to reactivate the security system. That's part of the restarting it. It just makes it harder because there's all those traps going off now and you have to deal with the security. If you activate it at the end, then you wouldn't have to deal with the security. And it wouldn't be as challenging or as frustrating. So. Yeah, I really like a lot of the narration in a lot of the quests too. Um, like some of my favorite lines are in a bunch of certain quests. Like in Delirious Part 1, right at the beginning, it's narrated by Gary Gygax, and he has this really dry tone of voice, almost like you, you actually have like a dude narrating it. So as opposed to like a, a in-character narrator, you have a guy who's just sitting there like, eh, whatever, like, you know, doesn't really get into character, but just kind of like reading off a script. And it's awesome because there's a line where you go into a room and you pull a lever to lower a bridge. And it's a very small room. And when you pull the lever, Gary Gygax goes, it's like, after pulling the lever, you hear the distant sound of, or it's like, you, or you hear the sound of the bridge dropping, followed by the less distant sound of the door slamming shut behind you. Because the door slamming shut behind you. It's, it's, it's the less distant sound. Because your character, you clearly hear the sound far away of the door slamming, or sorry, the bridge, but then you also hear the less distant sound of the door slamming shut behind you. Like, that's the, what a way to describe that, less distant. I don't know, it's just, there's just something about that. I just find it really funny. Uh, Anti-magic effects, I can't do anything. I heard the elf, oh yeah. Did the guy who made the pit say it was put together from... Yeah, no, it was supposed to be even bigger. They just, they couldn't, it was supposed to be bigger than that. I'm trying to imagine how long the pit actually could have been, theoretically. Elminster has an interesting amount of narration. It's not my favorite narration. Um, it depends. Okay, so I like Elminster's narration when it comes to, like, the King's Forest stuff. I actually really like it. The fact, like, some people don't like the little, the little narration bubbles or whatever. Um, where, like, you go into the explorer areas and instead of finding locations, you find the little notes that tell you a story. I don't like that entirely because it's not, it's not in order. There's no way to get it in order. And you also have no idea where they are. And some of them are really obscure. Like, there's no hint that tells you where they are. It just tells you the total amount. So unless you look at a map, you're not going to find them all on your own. You'll never find them all on your own. Like, I dare anybody on planet Earth to go through Stormhorns and find all those stupid little narration things. I really like the Stormhorns. I think it's a super cool area. Um, I like the way it's set up and designed. But you will never, ever, ever find all the stuff in the Stormhorns. What? 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 I just slid down the ladder. Ugh. <sighs> Anyway, but you'll never find them all, um, unless you use a map. But if you actually, you know, read it and go through it, it's really cool, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, can't cast spells. Wait, I can still use my spell-like abilities while in a bewildered field? Man, that's broken. Like, actually, that's I don't think that's working. Um... But yeah, I like a lot of the narration things. Like, the King's Forest, it's cool how, like, Elminster will tell you the story. I really like the ones where there's double. Um, if you haven't done the Necropolis, where you go and you find all the little the narration bubbles, I really, really like the Necropolis one. Um, the story of Vol and how and how Vol came to be. Um, and then also the whole thing with, like, the abbot and how he was, like, trying to steal her power and it goes through the whole, the whole shebang. I really, really like that storyline, um, and I thought it was really cool. You don't get a lot of it when you actually just play the game. Um, and then also, similarly, I really like the Thunderholm narration as well. It kind of explains, like, what's happening between, like, the Netherese and the rest of the, the rest of the people, or, like, why the Netherese are in there with the Cult of the Dragon. If you haven't gone to train, so a lot of the explorer areas are very fun. If you're just bored and you're like, man, I played the game so much and I don't know what to do, just go to the explorer areas. It's really cool. Oh, I, I guarantee you they will. There's a huge demand for it. I, I'm, I'm, like... I I'm, I don't know for for, for certain. Girdle of faith. Name item. Oh, that's cool. You want it? No, thank you. That's just a very cool item. But yeah, my phone keeps buzzing, and I do not know why. Apparently, I have a bunch of text messages. 
and a bunch of emails and a bunch of things on Twitter. Oh man, this is why I don't I don't read it. I don't have like anything on my actual second monitor usually. I just have like you know my little little my little Twitch chat here, so I can talk to you guys. Um, I could imagine trying to stream without two monitors. Um, I know some people try to do it, and it's like, well. Uh, the next one is going to be the two that are in house J Rasco. Um, the first one being. Uh, not And the Dead Shall Rise, the other one. Rest for the Restless? No. I'm going to share it. I'm going to get it and share it, but. From Beyond the Grave. Yeah, burning the graves. I don't got time for graves. Hey Strim, how do you feel about the new fighter enhance that gives you improved destruction on each hit? Um, well, I can tell you one thing. I thought it would be really broken. I thought, damn, that sounds really overpowered. And then I put my mouse over this ability here, Battering Barrage, while swashbuckling, damaging enemies with weapon attacks inflicts improved destruction. And since it's already in the game, uh, I don't think it's that overpowered anymore because it's already in the game and I never even noticed. So clearly it's not that powerful. I think it's strong, I think it's very good, um, but I don't think it's overpowered. I think it's... I don't think it's necessary. Like, it, it definitely is very strong. Improved def destruction on all your items, that means you don't have to worry about actually having that on your weapon itself. Um, so like I said, I'm not... I 100% agree that I think it is very strong. It is a very strong effect, undeniably. But, I don't think it's overpowered. I never heard anyone complain about it from the Bard's perspective, and... Like, that's not the reason why Swashbuckler is good. So, I think it's just an added bonus. I think it's a nice thing. I don't think it's overpowered. But yeah. Oh, hey, look, everybody's here. Cool. Let's go. So the trick with this one is I've shown this off many times, maybe on the official DDO stream and maybe not. If you don't stand on this little box here, if you don't touch this box, by the way, all the extra skeletons don't spawn, and you can just do it. It's super easy. But yeah. I agree with you. Vulnerability would be much stronger, but the thing is, vulnerability is much stronger than improved destruction. So destruction gives you one off of their armor class every time you attack them, so it's effectively like almost like a 5% chance to hit, which increases your damage. Um, and it also reduces their fortification by up to 20%. So it gives you a 20% chance to critically hit them, or a 20% extra chance to critically hit them, assuming you don't already have 100% fortification penetration from armor piercing, which is not impossible to get. Um, and assuming that you don't also have, um, or that the monster excuse me, the monster is also not, uh, sorry, is immune to um, critical hits. So for example, the monster is an undead or a construct. However, if the monster is not an undead or a construct, improved destruction isn't really that much better considering most people, especially melees, will have high enough chance to hit and they won't really need to worry about reducing the actual armor class. Um, the more vulnerability stacks, uh, vulnerability does not uh, reduce fortification. It only increases damage by percent. But that's the reason why the damage by percent thing is don't step on the box. Oh, he didn't step on the box. Oh, sorry. When I see these people run up, I'm like, Ugh. um, what do you mean the less DR you have? I don't, I don't entirely understand that. What do you mean the less DR you have? Like damage reduction? Yeah. Like the way I think, the way, like think about it this way: if you have vulnerability, vulnerability will always increase the damage by twenty percent, whereas fortification reduction can situationally increase the damage by twenty percent and synergizes better with certain builds. So I think I would prefer to have the improved destruction because the improved destruction requires you to optimize it in a better way. Sure, you can just slap it on and it'll always be kind of good, but it's not going to be as good as actually having uh, vulnerability. And additionally, um, it, it's not always strictly better, again, in situations where it's not... Howling, Pyroclastic, and Rust Dragons. Rust Monster Dragons? How do you fight that? You don't. You just start crying. You just start crying constantly. Oh, I can mesmerize these guys! Yo, when they spawn, I'll just fascinate them. I love that. Fascinate. Save. 51 will plus D20. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. It's not so much that they lose their DR, though. It's that... It, that's that's a, that's an interesting statement. Uh, 
Hey, where's the entrance to this quest? <laughs> it's inside Delirus Graveyard. Um, it's not so much that it in, in, in sorry, it uh um, one more time. Delirus graveyard. Oh, okay. I had like an arrow for a second there and then it disappeared. Yeah, we're almost done, so hurry in because the boss is about to spawn. Yeah, a friend of mine just called me up on TeamSpeak and distracted me. So. No worries. We'll try to hold off and kill the boss. Um it's not so much that they're losing their DR, it's that your damage is able to overcome their DR. So think about it this way. If they have like DR5, but, and you're, so say they have DR5 and you're dealing 10% more damage. Mm, it's hard. It depends if they have a percent, no. If they have a, it depends on whether they have a flat or percentage based damage reduction. So, um, oh my god. <laughs> I almost died there. Stupid death shade. Um, okay, so if you have a monster, certain monsters have percentage-based reductions. Hey, what's up, shoe heels? Uh, some certain monsters have percentage-based damage reductions. So, as an example, um, if you have a monster like uh, what are those skeletons? The bone shrike, bone shriek skeletons, and the bone shriek skeletons. Um, they're like regular skeletons, except they have a damage reduction to fire. Um, and it's a percentage-based damage reduction. It's not a flat one. If you apply vulnerability, when the vulnerability of their percentage, it's like a 15% reduction or something. If you can apply fire vulnerability beyond that 15%, per it'll go from not being reduced to then being weakened. So... You built it out of chat right now? guy that did the pit is Torque. Hey, there you go! Let me see. I tried to unban you, but it's not being banned. You're not banned. Wait, your chat is also being filtered out, Virtual Gib? That's weird. I can see both of your guys' chat. I can see you guys' chats, so that's weird. And neither of you are banned, I just checked. That's weird. Maybe there's something going on with the Twitch servers. Or we really are getting DDoSed. Oh no! Oh no! It's those it's those pranksters. Uh no, I un I just checked. I tried to unban Technical 13 and it says Technical 13 is not banned. Cause I can what who's who is on the ban list? If I type slash ban list, will it show everybody the ban list or just me? Ah, oh, the pain and the acid traps. It's nine o'clock. Oh my god, I didn't even notice. I was having too much fun just playing the video game. Yeah, secret door. Weird stuff. Hey, thanks for the runs. I'll see you guys later. Later, Slimgar. I don't know what the difference is then. I have to skip this song. I have to get that one off my list. I forgot I have to skip that one. Ah, oh, don't worry, Wizard Man. I'm not going to ban you. Not today. I was surprised. Usually you come up and say, like, hey, what up, nerds, or something. Or noobs. That's the one. Noobs and gimps. You call me a noob and a gimp, but I'm just going to tell you, you're going to be out there playing your swashbuckler. Your swishy backler, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, swish bash, swash buck," and you're not gonna realize that uh, the damage that you deal is actually significantly lower than the damage that I deal, and that your character's bad. And then you're gonna have to go delete your character, and that's not my fault. That's your fault for playing a bad character. So, hey, look at that! Everything's working. Welcome back to the Twitch chat. The tower summit seems See, one of the things that I really like is the fact that on if you go on Twitch and you watch like a, a VOD, it now has the the like the uh, the chat re replay, so you can actually see the chat as the VOD's going along. So if somebody's reacting to the chat but they don't have it on screen, you can still see the chat reaction, which is really cool. 
hold on, I feel like this is important. Uh... Oh my god, my my Google is so slow. I've got this one for you guys. Nerd! Here you go. That's right, there are nerds here. Everybody get out your pitchforks. Yeah, man. The, the best, my favorite, was the... Uh, so... When Lord of the Rings Online was in uh, was in beta, um, there was a huge amount of community, which was essentially what people referred to as un unlovingly as the lore Nazis on the forums, the beta forums, because there were people that were basically very upset that some parts of the lore were not exactly as they were in the book, and so they would they would get upset and they would post all these different things that they didn't like about the lore. And sort of like basically sort of how like a lot of what the burglar were wor how the burglar worked and things and um, some of the some of the actual locations and stuff some of the people that you saw around so they would they would get all upset and so um, like I said they were they didn't give themselves the titles of lore Nazis other people did that and they did not appreciate that there very much uh, which is completely understandable because it's not a very nice thing to call someone um, however uh, it was really funny and it's I just bring it up as like nerds to spite the nerds because. I've never read the Lord of the Rings books. I don't know what they say inside them. Who's read the Lord of the Rings? Like, I don't know. There's the hobbits go on an adventure and then the, the, the golem or something. Like, that's what happens, right? But I don't know. I never read the book. So I, like, I don't really care about the lore. So when I saw these people complaining about the lore on, this, on the forums and stuff, I was just like, um, I was like, oh, okay. Well, this is interesting. So my first character was a burglar called Lore Ninja because I was going to be the ninja from lore. And it would be a sneaky, sneaky badass who would kill people and be an assassin. I think it was me because on Twitch and the chat name was the same color as T13. Maybe. Woo! Oh, hey, look at that. Door's up. I can't open that door, though. Or the, the thing that's in the inside. Cool. And the... That, ooh, rare? I don't know where that was. Uh, the last quest we're going to do is the... Or not the last. The next one is Made to Order in House Gundarek. Oh, we don't have a trapper for this one. Oh, God. Don't die. Nobody's allowed to die. Oh, you actually read some of that book? Man, I feel bad for you. Um, That's I'm sorry. not going to happen. Nope, nope. Nobody's allowed to die. Can't happen. Uh, let's go through made to order. Oh my god, I'm still diseased. Okay, hold on. Get rid of that curse. And whip out my scrolls of heal. Beautiful. It takes care of everything. Uh, made to order. Made to order. It's in here somewhere. Just give me, give me a second. I'm going to find it. Dragon's Horde. Oh, for made to order. There we go. Sometimes finding quests in that list is just really hard. I wish there was like a search. You could just type it in. That would be that would be nice. That'd be a good feature. A good feature. Oh! I also don't want to listen to the song. This song's good though. Yeah, I've, I've never gotten through any of the any of the Lord of the Rings books. Not gonna see me doing that. I don't read books. That's not true. I do read some books. There was actually a post on the Oh plus six charisma ring! That's what I'm talking about. It's extra charisma, yo. Do I need extra charisma? Oh uh, well. When I turn 14, I'm basically going to equip a new Charisma item, so I don't really care about this Charisma. Um, Dire Resonating Ring? I'll just take that, whatever. Um, I don't read a lot of books. A book I do recommend, if you if you want to know more about the Eberron lore, uh, you can go ahead and try to find... Whoop, uh, let me just get this dragon out of the way. Uh, you can go ahead and trust yourself one of these books. Uh, this book right here, the Eberron campaign setting, is going to teach you a lot about the things that are going on in Eberron, the different stories, the characters, the people, the actual mainland, because the, the place that Stormreach is is not the mainland. This is like the Isle of Madness that people don't go to because it's a horrific, awful, horrible place, as you can tell by the amount of ventures that we get up to as you know, as your standard adventurer. Um, however, uh, 
There's a lot more to the world than just that, and there's a lot of books that kind of go into the details. There's some series that are better than others. My favorite one is the the Dreaming Dark trilogy by Keith Baker. Um, it's a fantastic book series. Um, it basically details a group of soldiers at the end of the most current war, uh, which ended with almost like a cataclysmic effect where an entire country exploded and everybody died. And it was such a massive magical explosion that the land is all... Like, there's, like, living spells and stuff just roaming the land trying to kill people, and it's just horrific. And nobody lives there. It's basically, like, burnt black. And it's a great story. I highly recommend it. It's not so much Uncharted. The way they describe it, especially in, um, in the book, uh, in the Dreaming Dark books, uh, they describe Zendrick as being, like, a land that no one wants to live in because it's sort of like the, it's like the land of madness where the seasons don't make sense. So you'll walk out and you'll have a jungle that is at one point a hot arid jungle, and then in ten minutes later it's like a, it's like a it's not hot arid arid's the wrong word, but you have a hot jungle and then it'll turn in like minutes into a frozen wasteland. Keeping the house, so you mostly spend time reading. Log. Yeah, it's true. Um, I don't, I don't. It's, it's different, though, I guess. I don't read that often, but I wouldn't say that's entirely true. I know a lot of people who are my age who definitely had TVs when they were growing up, and then they they like to read as opposed to watching TV. Um, I just don't really like to read or watch TV, if I'm being honest. Like, the last show I watched was Breaking Bad. So one, that dates me as a person, but two, um, it's a really good show. I just I just don't watch TV that often, though. Um, instead, what I do a lot is I just play video games. I do a lot of reading, but I just not like text or like book reading. I read on the internet, you know, because um, I like to keep up on stuff, whether it's publications. So, like, thanks to my school, I still have a subscription to uh, both Science, Nature, and PubMed. So I get to read all those things whenever I feel like it. So I do every once in a while and just browse to see what's out there. Um, sometimes hit up news publications, make sure to check out DDO forums and things like that every once in a while. And I spend a lot of time reading stuff on Reddit um, just because it's text-based. Anything text-based is easier. Right, I'm gonna let you go through first in all these trap areas, and then and then I'm gonna follow. So I do a lot of reading. I just don't do like you know reading for uh, like reading novels for entertainment. I don't do that very often. Because reading novels is just not my thing. I'd rather play video games. You know what I'm saying? See, this definitely works. I send the Barbarian in first. And then the Barbarian gets all the hits, and I don't care. Oh god, I'm going to give myself more mana, because I don't have enough mana to heal this Barbarian. <laughs> oh! Double champs. Double champion. Get them. Get champions. Cool. Oh, there's more champions. All right, all right, all right. Bring golems. Bring it. You, you, you tempered golems. Oh, the doors are the way. Ooh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Huh? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna dodge. Huh? I'm gonna dodge. Boom. Shout. 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 Yeah, I really like something like that. If there was actually like a quest where you kind of go out into a different area where the seasons are changing like constantly during the quest. And then it changes, like, the monsters or, like, things like that. So I think it'd be cool. Um, they did a really good job of capturing, like, the feel of, like, how strong of a connection Zendrick has to the Korai or to Dalkor, the Plane of Dreams. Oh, God, that one hurt. They did a really good job of capturing, like, that feel, which is which is important because Dalkor has a huge connection in Zendrick in, like, all of the books. Um, the, the way that they captured it in this game is I'm very happy with. That's where's one. Cool, and I can just run down this hallway, not worry about it. Get the full group stun. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, whoops, I wanted to heal the dwarf. Okay, alright. So now we gotta go kill all these golems. 
Yeah, let's clump up and kill all these golems. Oh my god, trip the golem. Barbarian's so strong, he just tripped the golem. Cut his legs out from underneath him. That was cool. Yeah, that, that I would like something like that. What I would like is to be like kind of like a shift in monster types. I would like it if they, instead of being like all demons and things that are basically just completely immune to fire and stuff. And then, I don't know, I'd like, I'd like to see a situation where monsters are like weak to different types of the effects. Like, could you imagine if there were monsters that were like genuinely weak to cold effects? Like demons, immune to fire, resistant to cold. Like, what the hell? You know, why can't it just be like, be like weak to, immune to fire, weak to cold? Stuff like that. No. Oh, give me the chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick this up. Uh, thanks for watching, Edward T. I uh, appreciate your, your loyal dedication, and we'll see you again. Um, oh, in case anybody's like, man, I am I don't have time to watch stream time all day today. Uh, that's fine, because tomorrow, uh, just so you know, I'm going to be doing a live stream from 10 in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll be doing like a three-hour live stream. So if you're bored and you're around, you can catch me on there. I will be streaming. If you're like, but stream time, that, that time frame sounds like ridiculous. Why would you stream during those hours? It's like super dumb. I agree. I agree it is like super dumb. But at the same time, regardless of how super dumb that actual time frame is, um, that's because my work schedule sucks right now. And so that's the only time I can stream is tomorrow from 10 until 1. So you're going you're gonna to deal with it. And you're going you're gonna to watch it. You're going to be like, damn, look at, look at this stream that I'm watching. It's like so good. Mm, 10 to 1. I think my golems are watching over the crest, and that means they're watching you. I'm gonna break all these breakables. Just smash this stuff here. Yeah. Remoraz, a giant centipede creature that lives in the Arctic that's immune to fire. Why? Oh yeah, Re is that Remoraz or Remoraz? I think Remoraz, but it definitely sounds like Remoraz. It's also, there's a lot of things that are different between, like, the, uh, this, like, I'm uh, not DDO, but between DDO and the actual, like, uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaign. So, like, as a good example, um, in Dungeons and Dragons campaign, uh, docents are, and in the books, in the books and in the, um, the campaign setting, docents are not, like, things that give you buffs, but they're actually magic, they're, like, entities on their own. Um, and the, the docents have, like, their own, basically, intelligence intelligences inside of them and that's actually one of the main plot points of one of the stories um, is that you know they the intelligences you know can have major roles in the stories and but they can't actually enact that in DDO because that would not make sense how would you have like an intelligent thing in your chest I don't know how they would actually write that in as a game mechanic so I understand why it's not something that exists. I'm excited though. I mean, they are adding new monster types. What I do like the fact is they're adding new monster types and they're not even just reskins, you know? Like the slads are not reskins. Well, I mean, they're close to reskins of Hezru, but they're kind of cool. But then you have other monsters like the, uh, you know, the Glabrazoo, which have their own unique effect animation, which is super cool. You got uh, the new Umber Hulks, which have their own unique animations, their own unique dance, which is awesome. I've never made one dance yet though, because I've never encountered one because I haven't done the new quests because I'm a total jerk. That's not the point. Hmm. Yeah. Are there any monsters that aren't in DDO that you guys would like to see in the game? Like any monsters that you're like, every time you play a campaign, you're like, oh man, I, I include these monsters. Or like, whether you've like seen them in books and things like that, and you're like, man, this is something that should just be in the game. Okay. So when you start stepping on traps, you can't just jump back and forth and through them. It doesn't work. Thanks, Elmo. I like me too. I mean, I am I am pretty fantastic and great. Oh, thanks. I forgot about the crest. Thanks, Elmo. That means a lot. Didio does not have badgers, I'll tell you that much. Lurkers above. Yeah. 
See, you have to understand, you might watch my stream and be like, damn, this guy is like the biggest head. He's such an inflated sense of ego. And you see, that is true. I do have a pretty inflated sense of ego, but it, Sorry, I could have a bigger head, you know? I could, I could have, a, I could use a bigger head. So I, I just, I need, I need, I need a, I need a bigger head. So you helping me inflate my ego makes me feel very, very good. Thank you. Yeah, I just don't have my protections anymore, so I'm gonna get vaped if I step on a trap. Uh oh. Badges would be pretty good. All right, so it's true. There are no badges in DDO. Um, and you know, if you're gonna get yourself familiar, oh, there's no familiars in DDO. Like a monster I would like to see would for sure be a Displacer Beasts because Displacer Beasts are frustrating and irritating and uh, the Dungeon Master that I used to play with always put Displacer Beasts everywhere. Just just everywhere. He was like, whoa, what, you know, you guys are going into like an ogre cave. By the way, Displacer Beasts! And you can't hit them with any of your melee or your ranged and because... Most of the people that played spellcasters played like these wussy, like either part rogue spellcasters, like no illusionists, so they're not doing anything. Ow, I'm gonna die here. Okay. Oh god. Karen Crawler, Solution Beast, Baloth, and Manticores. Manticores would be cool. I like I liked both that suggest Manticores. It's true, they really do. Oh, jeez. They do need to add some manticores into this game. I'd love to see some manticores. Ooh, give me some of that shrine. Give me that mana back. I also have like no bard songs left. But yeah, manticores would be pretty sick. I really want displacer beasts. I would love to see that. I actually, I remember what I was thinking like, you know, it'd be cool purple worms. And then I was actually just walking around in the Wayloon prison, and then boom, all of a sudden, it's like, oh crap, there are purple worms in this game. They're right here. Whoops. Man, this is a good remix. I don't know if I should turn the music back on, like, actually so you guys can see it. Let me see if I can do that, because this song is, like, super good. If you're like, damn, I played me some uh, Super Mario 64, and I want to hear this song because it's really good. Then I'm going to turn this on for you. This should work. Yeah, there you go. Because this one's good. Balhanath are great. They're creatures that hunt and eat drow. Well, I do like that. I do like things that eat drow. Whoa, no! Oh no, I fell. I'll be there in a second. I can't believe I just fell. I'm so bad. Oh my god. I didn't have a crest, did I? Oh god. Oh god, I'm so scared. I'm so scared they're gonna step on one. Oh Jesus. Which way do I go? This way, okay. 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 Mm. Okay. Oh, jumping. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Okay, good, good. We're not dead. We're not dead. Oh, these traps. Oh god. It's so stressful. It's so stressful, dude. Okay, we made it. 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 Did I make it? I'm not high enough. Oh my god, we have to go higher. Wait a second, can I just get there from like the entrance? Dude, I could totally make it from like the entrance. Wait a second, I can make it from the entrance, hold on. Dim door? Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find you guys, don't worry. Intellect devourers, mind flayer, attack dogs? I feel like I've seen that monster before. Ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! That's what I talk about ingenuity. Knowing the maps beforehand. Alright, we need to get blown up by traps here. Check this out. Good thing my healing effect is still going. Some Oh, jeez. I'm still contributing. Ow! My bones. It's too bad as a bard I don't get, like, sonic absorption. Where, like, when monsters hit me, I just, like, absorb the damage. Like, I don't, I don't take damage from sonic anymore. I can, like, heal from it. That's one thing I don't like that's not in the player's hands, is healing from damage types. I think it would be really cool if you could heal from, like, like as a fire sorcerer, you know, you could heal from fire damage, something like that. Oh yeah, Ettons would be cool too! I can't believe there's no Ettons in this game! Where are the two-headed giants? Oh, are we locked out?
Abolith. I feel like I know the Abolith is like the giant, the giant soul harvester thing, right? I like Aboliths. I think Abolith. Nope, that's not what I'm thinking of. Oh, there was a. Eh, no worries. Yeah. Good work, team. Cool. Slimy primordial fish creatures. Yeah, I see them here at the Abolith. It's very cool looking. Like this thing that I have here. Uh, yeah, this 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 creature. Ah, oh, there's a there's a really long link that you probably didn't need. Cool. Uh, well, that's every single level third or level eleven quest for me. Ooh, Dwarven Axe of Deadly. That'd be a good as like an offhand. Where you fight big sea creatures, where you show up in an underwater cavern in a spot of land or something, you fight stuff around you. Uh, unfortunately, there's no water-based combat in this game. Sort of. Yeah, I'm also going to level... Um... Yeah, I'm, I don't have any other level 11s left. Do I? Other than the tombs, which I'm not doing. I don't do the tombs because the tombs suck. Yeah, we've done all the level 11s. So I'm going to take my level and then... Um, I mean, do you guys want to do invaders with me? Everybody loves invaders. I got more 11s too. Ah, okay. Have a good one. Later, man. Um, sort of. There is... So there's no underwater combat, so monsters... Uh, areas where you fight monsters that are around you. Instead, there is a quest called... Um, is it Into the Deeps? I believe it's here. Yeah, Into the Deep. The serpent boss thing. Dude, that's a purple worm. That's a purple worm, my friend. And there's there are more quests with purple worms. If you haven't done the quest, um, belly the belly of the beast, I highly recommend. I'm not going to spoil it. Just go do belly of the beast. That's in uh, it's level 22 quest. It's in the underdark, um, and the belly of the beast is an awesome quest. If you haven't done it, just go do it. Just and make sure you read all the dialogue and everything. Like talk to all the people, read all the dialogue. It's an awesome quest. I highly recommend it. The other quest I would recommend for you is Into the Deep. This is the only underwater combat quest in the game, and it is a completely designed underwater quest. Um, there was supposed to be three-dimensional combat, but after what happened with, um, with, like if you've seen. Uh, sorry, not. Uh, sorry, but they just basically decided the underwater combat wouldn't work in three dimensionals, so it's it's still underwater and there's underwater combat, but it's it has an interesting flow to it. But Into the Deep is a very very cool quest if you haven't had the chance to do it. I highly recommend it. Anyway, now I'm gonna level up as a bard. Put my points in. Jump. Cool. And I get a spell. I love the like, level 5 spells. Like, what spell am I going to take? Like, uh... I don't know. <sighs> Shadow Walk? No, that's dumb. Summon Monster 5, sure. I don't even care. I just get points. Cool. Now I have Summon Monster 5. And I'm level 14. Level 14 brings me a couple of very interesting things. One, it gives me an extra point here. I'm probably going to put this into... Oh, I have two extra points? Cool. So I'll probably take Poetic Edda to get one more bard song, because I just like having more bard songs. And then I'll take weapon training, which gives me martial weapon proficiency. So I can do that. Bam. So now all of a sudden, this this hammer of leaden clouds, which I have, I can now equip. And I'm actually going to take off my cosmetic, so I can actually see the hammer. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, Warhammer. This Warhammer is awesome, because not only does it stun when I hit people, which is cool. It also gives me Sonic Lore and Resonance, so extra Sonic spell damage. I'm a huge fan of that. Lizard Men and Troglodytes? 
Um, no, the difference between lizard men and troglodytes is lizard men are lizard people, so like the reptiles, they run your government. Like Obama's a lizard person, so that's lizard men. And troglodytes, I guess the way you can think about it is lizard men are lizards and troglodytes are closer to amphibians. So troglodytes like dank, dark, water-based places so they can constantly keep their skin hydrated, but they also have like a horrible stench. Oh, rock, rock already got it for you. Oh, I didn't even think about spell wards. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, well, I'll take it next time. I'll get more. I'll get more fifth level spells. I have some of my monster now, so I guess that's fine. Bam. Do I have another level 14 item? Yeah, I do. The Ghost Waking Cloak level 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 14. Let's just put this on. Bam. Ghostly. Now I have 34 charisma. Charisma, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty good. Cool. It's not bad. So I'm going to re-grab my ship buffs real quick, and then I'm going to do invaders. Let's swap this over so people know what we're doing. Invaders. So 11. I'm going to make sure I go type here. Make sure we're doing invaders. Everybody likes invaders. I'm doing invaders, one, because I need invader tokens. But also because it's a fun quest. Everybody likes invader tokens. Or, sorry, invaders. I don't know how this character is going to fare in Invaders, because I don't have a death block item. I'm going to get destroyed. But yeah, like I said, the lizard people are the, like like I said, the lizard men are like the thing that run the, the things that run the government, and uh, the, the troglodytes are like monsters that are covered with like slime and they have a stench. Like I said, do you think of troglodytes more like being, being like, more, more amphibian-like? So they live in like swamps and in places that aren't as nice. Whereas lizard folk are not quite the same. Lizard folk can kind of just do whatever. They're less restricted, you know what I'm saying? I swear I had an item to equip when I hit level 14. I just don't remember what it was. And now I can actually, because I don't have any other items, I can put this voice of the master back on. Because I don't have any other trinkets. Sonic absorption 20%. Sightful diplomacy. Ring. Thought I had a level 14 item. Necromancy focus. That seems wrong. Huh. I'm just going through my items slowly. Because that's what you guys like watching, right? You like watching somebody going through their items slowly? Yeah. Content. Oh, evocation focus 3. Cool. Here we go. So now my, my shout has a DC of 37, 38 while buffed. That's not bad. 38 at level 14 DC? I will take it. I will take that buff. All right, we're going to go do invaders real quick, um, and then that will be my last quest for the day, likely, just because we're getting close to the end. You know, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because, you know, I want to I want to stay here and stream forever. Um, but I can't. One, because I have, like, a real job, and I have to, like, do things during the day and stuff, so I can't just stream here forever. You know, got to pay damn bills. And also because there's other people that stream on the same channel as well. Um... However, if you're like, damn, you know, I've had a good time watching this Strim Jim fella. He's got a, he's got a good, I like the cut of his jib. He's got an interesting head on his shoulders. Um, I mean, I do use head and shoulders. It's nice. But if you're like, man, I'd like to see this more of this guy, just slightly more, just a little, like, like maybe 11% more. That's actually an option. Uh, I do have my own Twitch stream that I'm going to advertise right now. Bam. Check it out. Look at that. Did you know you can actually follow me on Twitch? You can go to this link right here, and you can see me streaming when I'm not uh, when I'm not actually on this channel here. So that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool stream. This guy stream stream stam, and he's cool. And then also there, uh, there's you can follow me on Twitter to see what I'm doing or when I'm doing things. I post on Twitter, I wouldn't say frequently, but sporadically. And uh, and then if you need to reach me, streamtom at gmail.com is my YouTube and like social media email thing. So yeah, that's how you do that. My cleric. I don't know if I can solo this without Molina's help. I think we can get trucked by beholders, but we're gonna find out. So I'm just gonna leave the cleric here in case I need help. I'm gonna do a full buff though. Full buff. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Ironclad maulers, pretty cool. Basically, it's dire bears and armor. I like that. I've already talked in length how much I would like for there to be. Um, welcome. Just stepped inside. 
I've already talked in length how much I think it would be cool if there was um, like a f cosmetic effects for animal forms. I would love cosmetic effects for animal forms. Horn monsters making their saves like for real though. Like my save is what thirty eight. That's crazy. That there's actually guys making their saves. So I forgot to give myself bonus mana. Ugh, get out of here, flesh render. Oh, he's making all his saves. Oh, he's making all his saves. What a badass. Okay, cool. So what we do here is we're going to stun the Beholder. Okay, now we're going to back up a little bit. Cool. I killed one Beholder. The other one's kind of out of range. I'm going to kind of hope we're going to hit it with this. Got him with the stun. Going to get the next stun rolling. Anti-magic field. Oh, snap. Got him. Got him. Ooh. That's what I'm talking about. Give myself a good, a greater restoration. Badger, wolf, or bear form. All right. So now we're going to use these greater restoration scrolls. I'm going to fail repeatedly, but that's okay. I'm going to greater heroism myself, and then I'm going to continue to fail repeatedly. Oh, no. I got it. Cool. We're good. And because we're going to we're going to give Yekon this this pure fighter. What a beast. He doesn't give a shit. I just need to get the buffs going. Oh, don't worry. I have greater restoration. And bard songs don't go away. Also, I put some points in the uh, the war chanter stuff, so my my damage bard songs are good for you. No, finger of death. God damn. All right, come on, Beleth. Pick me up. Pick me up. Pick me up. Revive me. Heal me. Raise dead. No. Oh, no, I disappeared around a corner, so I didn't get the heal from Beleth. The raise dead. Damn. Yeah. Man bear pig form. No, ra raise me, you stupid hireling. Give me, give me life. Bring me back to life. Wake me up inside. Oh, anti-magic. Okay. So I'm playing support right now. It's kind of backup singing. Death block item. Uh, death block item is for for not men. I don't use death block items because because I'm a man and I don't need one. Um, I'm an independent bard and I don't need no need no death block item. Oh, Bella's probably gonna die. I should have a death block item if I'm doing invaders. I really like to look at this hammer though. It looks awesome. I just like swinging around a hammer like I'm Thor. Like bro. Sona, what are you doing? Yo, this ain't no support Sona. This is this is full AP mid Sona. I used to do that. That was fun. You just buy a Lich Bane first and you kill people. Oh, uh, satisfying. Okay. Is it Beholder? Okay. So, oh, respawns. Cool. Everything dies in one hit, which is still good. That guy doesn't die in one hit, though. Yeah, whatever. It's not what matters. What matters is the getting the stun on the Beholder. What? He woke up way too fast. I don't I don't have DJ Sona because I didn't like it. I thought the skin looked dumb. I have uh I have Arcade Sona though. Because I like Arcade Sona. Bear in mind I don't play League of Legends. So that's this is just me. I don't I don't play League of Legends. The game sucks. Ooh. Oh, that could work, yeah. The problem is the death block augments come out of the store, right? I don't want to go to the store. I don't want I don't want to go to the store to pick up uh pick up uh an augment gem, things like that. So what's really important, especially when you play classes with crowd control and different different ways you can aim effects, don't target crowd control if you don't have to. And the reason I say that is because an ability like Soundburst, something like this, if I target this Soundburst, invariably the monster is going to run off to the side, it's going to say, oh, the target's no longer in line of sight or you're not facing, and you don't get your crowd control. And when you don't get your crowd control, it means you just die. You're just straight dead. You don't land your crowd control, your character dies. So it's very important that you land your crowd control whenever possible. Ok, 
Okay, I was gonna give myself greater heroism. Just tell me if you have any negative levels. Because I can remove them. Ready, keep going. Gotta keep going. Gotta kill all these demons. Gotta kill the invaders. I do like that when monsters don't instantaneously kill me, I can, like, it's basically with these monsters, it's 50-50. Do I instantaneously kill them and destroy them, or do they instantaneously kill me and destroy me? Find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <sighs> oh, jeez, that's a lot. That's a lot of monsters. Oh, 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 jeez. Oh, God. Oh, oh, bolly, billy, billy, dilly. Yeah, man. Dude, that's not even the best. I hit for 11.17 today. See, that's what I told you. The, the title is not, like, incorrect. It's actually really, really completely accurate. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Uh, it's hard to read. Elf bard. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Shout's a, shout's a good spell. The way you can amp up your shout for like super stat padding purposes is you start off with the sound burst first. So go up to these guys, give them the sound burst, breaks the spell pen train, they both fail. 1123 right there. Oh god, I can't not face this. Get out. No, don't make your save. What? How does it make a save? It's a 38 fortitude save. I'm level 14. This is why people hate DC casters. What the hell, dude? Oh, this is the best bard in A, 100%. Like, there's, there's no better bard. You can't play a better one. Like, that's just a true fact. People, like I said, people will play these, like, dumb swashbucklers, but let me tell you something. You know what swashbucklers, like, don't do? Like, I'll tell you what they do do. That's be dumb. They, they be dumb. That's, what they, that's something they do. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die right here. Goodbye. Goodbye, world. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe I'm not dead. Oh, I'm not dead. Never mind. Let's just rage everybody. Whoop. All right, can I can I pop around this corner and get the beholder? Got the stun. Ooh, it's all about get gotta get that stun. Yeah, bro. Just wait till I actually have good abilities. No, irresistible dance. It's irresistible. My dancing, it's so good. My dancing is so good, it's irresistible. That's why my character just has to dance. It's just, it's too good. I'm coming. Ugh, clear out that room. Again, that's one of the reasons that I really enjoy using, um, oh, see, I really enjoy using the bard spells. Pretty much nothing's resistant to it. Oh my god, will you stop it? 90% and I fail twice in a row with use magic device. <sighs> sometimes, man, sometimes this game is just like, it's like, get out. That's why you see stuff like, oh, look, I'm singing most of the time, but I'm still at 59 kills. Because, like, oh, this Ice Flinger, I just, like, pop it for 826 damage. <laughs> Alright, final boss time. Final boss time. Ooh, what kind of monster is it? It's not the Beholder. I can't I can't hit the Beholder. Going to go for the full group stun. Is it the Ice Flinger? It's Tharkul. I want Tharkul's Claw. I want Tharkul's Claw. Cool, good work, everybody. Uh, if you do not want your outsider tokens, I will l gladly take them from you. Outsider tokens. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Cool. I'm going to take a bit of a break here myself. So I will I'll catch you guys around. I'm talking to the guys in my party. I'm talking to the guys in my party. Please understand. I'm talking to the guys in my party. Uh so I'll leave that group. Um uh, Impulsive 96 reconstructed buckler of negative resistance. Too bad I don't need negative resistance. Golly gee, Willikers. I'll take the trophy. 
All right. Well, guys, it is now 9.59. We are reaching the end of the stream stream. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time. If you liked my stream and the things that I did today, please feel free to uh, give a follow to the stream here on the DDO stream. I, I'm here every single Monday from 7 until 10 o'clock, a schedule I don't foresee changing any time in the near future. However, um, if you're like, dang, I cannot get enough Jim Jam, please go ahead and follow me on Twitch TV. It's a good idea. You can see all sorts of stuff, like the crazy super bird. And you're like, man, this build is like so good. I might end up writing a guide for it. We'll see. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm going to see how it fares in epics, though. I feel like getting your shout all the way up to 25 D6s is like too good. So... I don't know how I'm going to amp the crits, though. That's my really my only question. But we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, it's been a slice. It's been fun. And uh, I'm glad you guys hopefully had a fun time, too. We'll see you around, and have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, 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 bye.